skewing area. You can see the active weather going on. We talked about two waves that will be making its way across the area. The first wave making its way through, kind of unorganized, running away from the higher level of instability that has been out to our west. So I'm really not concerned about that line. The only threat may be some lightning that we expect to see. It's that second wave that's really popping up around Iowa City and points southward, just south and west of Mount Pleasant. That is where we've been seeing numerous warnings popping up from severe thunderstorm warnings to even that red box you can see just west of Lee County, Iowa, of a tornado warning. That's the line we have to be concerned about. In fact, these yellow squares that we see there are kind of more solid. That's an indication that there is a possibility within that line from Mount Pleasant all the way up to Iowa City that we could possibly get a tornado out of it. There is a little bit of rotation that we're noticing with this line, this broken line, and that continues to make its way off to the northeast around, what, 45, 50 miles an hour. So that is what we'll be watching as we go through the next few hours or so. All this is running into some fairly warm and even some humid air. The warm front is just to our north, and uh, that's why the air is very buoyant, allowing for some of this activity and instability uh, to be taking place to our south and west. My goodness, look how dark it is. And yeah, we're getting some of the rain from this first wave, 74 at the airport of Moline after a high of 78. And look what we see over in Davenport, it's just sheets of rain falling. I don't believe Bandit, River Bandit is going to be playing this evening with uh, this uh, severe weather that we could potentially see next few hours. 71 over there as well. Once this moves on by, then a big spring chill starts to develop across the area. We'll break that down for you, Shelby, in just a few minutes. And to stay on top of all weather alerts and developments, just text the word weather to 309-304-0888, and we'll send that information right to your phone on where to find our Storm Track 8 interactive radar, storm outlook, and News 8 app. Meanwhile, a new report is...
Lightning is your time. We've been seeing our fair share of some rain. We've been seeing our fair share of some lightning. A little bit of wind to go with it as well. That's been it so far, and that's some good news, and it's mainly because of that first wave that is now racing its way across the area. This is the first wave we're talking about. A lot of lightning going on, as you can see, from uh, and now making its way in toward Bureau County, and then we skip our way northward right around, looks like uh, Jackson County around here. Boy, look at all that lightning taking place from New Makokota. All that continues to make its way off to the northeast, but that wave to our uh, west, that's the one we're concerned about. Already impacting areas from Iowa City, outside of Mount Pleasant and farther south where as you go, as we now do have a new tornado warning out uh, for parts of, uh, uh, parts of Lee County and also going to Henry County, Iowa. This is Lee, this is Henry County, Iowa, just came up. This is until 5 p.m., and it does include the Mount Pleasant area. You can see the gathering of lightning, all situated in one local area just north of Mount Sterling and Farmington. That's where we're kind of seeing some spin going on, and you can see it right there clearly on our velocity mode just north and west of Farmington. Uh, green's going away from the radar, the red's going toward, and that's kind of what we're seeing with that spin in the clouds, all provided by the raindrops moving away and toward the radar side itself, and that continues to make its way off to the north and east, likely around 55 miles an hour or so. So if you're in this path, we're on Salem, New London, and like we said, just near Mount Pleasant, uh, you're in the path of this storm. And keep in mind, uh, radar is also indicating uh, that we're getting uh, over maybe silver dollar size hail as well, at least indicated by the radar itself. So once again, that tornado warning goes on for about 45 minutes or so. We make our way a little farther northward uh, through Henry County, Iowa, and points northward. Severe thunderstorm warning, that is until about 5 o'clock or so. And then even farther northward as you go for another 15 more minutes, this severe thunderstorm warning will be impacting, of course, around Iowa City and points northward around North Liberty. Let's kind of zoom into Iowa City. I just got off the phone with my daughter. She's uh, uh, taking a class out there, and she just left Iowa City. Thank goodness on that. Things look pretty clear eastward as you go on Interstate 80, but if you're watching us around Iowa City, hunker down for at least a good solid hour before that wave makes its way off to the north and east. A lot of lightning going on. That's a big concern for us as far as maybe potentially seeing maybe some more tornado chances as well. Uh, running into some of that very unstable air ahead of that system as well. So we were always concerned about this first wave maybe taking a lot of juice out of this second wave. But as you can see, it is doing very well as it continues to race its way off to the north and east. And we'll continue to be in this kind of severe weather threat for at least until around the mid-evening hours, and then things begin to calm down after that. Right now we're seeing temperatures generally in the low 70s on the Illinois side along it, and then kind of cools out pretty quickly the farther west as you go. And it's all about the dew points too. We've got enough of that instability building up to produce some of these active showers and thunderstorms. And anytime you see those dew point temperatures in the 60s, that means you got enough instability, enough humidity and moisture in the air to allow to set off some of this uh, shower and thunderstorm threat. And like we said, the severe threat will continue very high likelihood with that three out of five that covers mainly around the western two thirds of our viewing area. But it doesn't matter if you're in this maroon color or in this red color, uh, the severe weather threat will continue even farther eastward heading later on tonight. So that's gonna be our, our biggest threat uh, around here. And of course, uh, any more warnings that we do have that take place, we will be ready. Meteorologist Andrew Stusky is in the Weather Center. We have Morgan Strackbine in the Beast, and we will be covering you constantly until the threat is all said and done. There's that second wave that we see by 6.30. It uh, doesn't do justice. I think we're going to be seeing a pretty decent line get ready to cross the river by about that time. And then things really begin to quiet down after that. We just don't see this third wave that has been kind of chatted about lately. I just don't see that. That, I think, is going to stay well off to our north and west. We'll just be dealing with a lot of broken clouds rolling in from time to time as we go through the nighttime hours. Temperatures still look rather mild with uh, overnight lows only dropping in the upper 50s. And as we go throughout our Wednesday, uh, kind of a mostly to partly cloudy day, but keep this in mind, there is going to be some wind coming in behind this system. Even though skies will be improving by about Wednesday evening, temperatures lower 60s that we see for highs, but uh, it may be a bit cooler than that when these winds start really gusting. And this may be more of a conservative look on these winds that we see, especially as we had later in the day, clocking around maybe as high as 34, 35 miles an hour. 
They locally, I think it could be a little bit stronger. I mean, this is a very tightly wrapped storm system that will be departing and leave behind plenty of wind going into the afternoon. And those temperatures get even cooler still in the days to follow. We'll show you that with the help of your eight day tracker right after this. Did you know poor speech and noise hearing is associated with up to 91% increased risk of dementia? Concept speech and noise testing can help you understand you and your hearing loss. Call Concept to receive your free hearing screening and find out how our state-of-the-art hearing devices can help. Concept, Concept by Iowa Hearing, bringing people together. After that Wednesday event with all that wind and 63 degrees for the high, get cooler still in the days to follow. In fact, another wave of wet weather will be developing scattered in basis on Thursday. Coolest of the air will be expected going into the first half of the weekend with highs around 50. And then we'll try to rebound a little bit in the days to follow, especially by next week with those numbers in the 60s. Of course, we'll keep you updated with that severe weather coverage right here on News 8 Shelby. If we need to interrupt, we'll let you know. All right. Thanks, James. Yep.
to less than 40 minutes if it continues at same speed, which I believe is around uh, 45 to even around 50 miles an hour or so. So even in the path of this storm, time to get to your safe place right away. Don't try and look for it, okay? Uh, these are going to be very fast-moving storms, so you, you're only dealing with minutes here uh, when this is going to impact you. And you can see the circulation right there. And what's really interesting is the fact that um, this area of activity is so far away from the radar itself that we can still... Uh, distinguish this nice spin that's going on right here uh, just east of around Harrisburg that we see making its way northeast just outside of Salem right there in 218 so you can see how quickly that is moving off to the northeast if you're watching us even around New London like we said Danville uh, you are in that path of that storm so once again uh, get to your safe place right away so that is one warning that is taking place and you can see that if it continues at speed it won't be long until it crosses uh, inter uh, looks like Highway 34 right around 5 o'clock. And then even farther north and east, if it holds on together, it will be hitting 61 here just around Minneapolis around 515 or so. Okay, so that's the big concern that we have when it comes to that particular storm. Uh, a lot of instability to work with here, a lot of storm energy in between these two uh, waves that we're dealing with. And you can see that storm energy just slipping its way in right along the river in southeastern Iowa ahead of that main system. So that's why we're concerned about uh, what those storms that continue to grow and produce numerous warnings uh, ahead of that. And that's what we're concerned about going into the evening hours for parts of Illinois as well. So that's the storm energy and how it's going to be uh, kind of traveling going in the next few hours. The yellow, that's a big concern for us, making it its way, especially near the I-80 corridor and point southward. Let's go to some more warnings that are actually taking place here. Oh, here's our tornado index. And this kind of gives a composite of, you know, the type of rotation that is going on. We have some rotating uh, atmosphere going on just near the Quad Cities and points south and west. So the conditions at least are certainly ripe for uh, additional tornadoes to pop up, okay? The question is, what part of the storm could potentially produce that? And that's something that we are going to be tracking here uh, as we make our way the next few hours. Let's go a bit, little bit farther north where you can see the warnings are popping up left and right. In fact, we're going to go to this tornado warning now, thankfully, just outside of Iowa City, just north of Iowa City, making its way off to the north and east, heading toward Mechanicsville as well. You can see the cluster of lightning situated with this storm. That's usually where you can find a little bit of that circulation, a little bit of that rotation uh, that is taking place uh, when you see that cluster of lightning together. So let's see if we can put that velocity mode in, and Drew and we'll show everyone where we could potentially see that rotation. It does look very impressive, uh, but if we had to kind of pick it, would you say, right here, Andrew? About right there right on Newport. Newport. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of, and that's going to steadily make its way off to the north and east. Fortunately, going to be making its way just outside of our viewing area. Tipton, I think you'll be fine as far as that storm is concerned, uh, even around Clarence, but Mechanicsville, uh, Olin, I think you'll definitely be in the path of that if it does hold together. That too is making its way off to the north and east. Just east of all that, and it's a big area, a uh, severe thunderstorm warning that we see here. My goodness, and it covers all the way from Monticello right down to Tipton and Wilton. So that's the line we'll be watching for the potential of maybe seeing some uh, hail, maybe quarter size. That is just enough to produce some damage if you have the car parked outside uh, right now as we speak. And maybe some good wind going with it as well uh, as that makes its way off to the north and east. All that ahead, seeing all the thunderstorm activity going on around Jackson County and points southward right down to Clinton County. Nothing severe with this, but some nice rain, a lot of lightning, maybe even a brief power outage can't be ruled out with that wave as it makes its way uh, off toward the north and east. So that's kind of what we're dealing with. Here's that first wave, very unorganized, kind of raced away from the level of instability that is still parked out to the west, and that's why we're seeing this um, kind of unorganization of, of uh, showers and thunderstorms that are going on. So um, we're not, really not worried about this wave as it makes its way off to the northeast. You're going to get some nice rain out of this, maybe a good quarter of an inch, maybe some local areas, even half an inch of rain as that makes its way off to the north and east. But as that wave off to the west, you can see the break that we see here. There's actually some clearing, brief clearing going on here. So it's gathering all that and fueling that line that we see off to the north and west, producing some of that severe weather that we see. Andrew, I know you've been keeping an eye on this as well. Anything that we could, uh, uh, that we might have missed, uh, missed out on in this, uh, this event? 
morning, as you pointed out there. And also notice too, it's that really light yellow, kind of that canary yellow color. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see, you know, at the top of your screen right now, the tornado warning takes precedent. But if I kind of get away from that for a second, you see yeah. just above James head, it says tornado possible. So that's just an indication. You know, we were looking at the tornado parameter moments ago, that areas just ahead of this line, it's that case where we could see that really quick spin up tornado really at any moment. So any severe thunderstorm warning that you're seeing in our system that is tagged with that tornado possible, it's one of those instances where you really got to treat it as if a tornado warning uh, were in place. And can't reiterate enough too, we've been talking about this all morning long about how we have those ingredients available for those stronger tornadoes, those EF2 plus uh, strength tornadoes. Now I think that potential, the stronger tornado potential is a bit higher when you go south of Interstate 80. That's where we've been watching the higher dew points, if you will, the dew points that are more into the 60s and getting close to the mid 60s. So for example, watching that storm that's near Salem and Mount Pleasant, that's the one that would have the better potential to likely have a little bit of a stronger um, tornado. And we actually have meteorologist Morgan Strackbine who is near yeah. Wapolo, um, that is in the beast right now. In fact, perfect position to be able to see this storm coming up. Uh, actually headed right for your location. Not in a warning quite yet, but it probably won't be long. You'll be next in line. Uh, so we're going to check in and see um, what is happening near uh, Wapolo right now. So let's check in with meteorologist Morgan Strackbine. Hey, Morgan, what are you seeing? Yeah, hey, uh, Andrew, we are continuing to stand by kind of right now in Wapolo, but I will take you what we're or take you outside right now what we're looking so you can kind of see that clearing wow. out in the distance. But what we're kind of interested in is watching all this stuff that's starting to push in all ahead of this line. And of course, I've been keeping a real close eye on that tornado warning that has that pretty strong signature pushing towards Mount Pleasant and Danville. And that's going to continue to move northeast and likely kind of get very close to that Wapolo area. But I do want to give you a close look at the Mamadis clouds Mamadis, that are just yeah. above us too. And if you don't want, know what Mamadis clouds are, they're a pretty good indicator associated with that severe weather threat that we are seeing and a presence of sinking air. So we're going to continue to kind of hang out here. And you can also see that flag in the distance, some pretty strong winds that we're seeing here so far. So we're going to continue to hang out here, probably start to head back towards Muscatine here in a little bit. And where we're also seeing some severe thunderstorm warnings issued as well. But for now, back to you guys in the station. Yeah, James, the Mamadis clouds, that's the first thing that, that caught my attention as yeah. she was panning that camera on the beast left and right. And it's a it's a testament to the instability that's going on uh, across the region, too. So that storm that's on the way to Morgan, 34 minutes away from Wapolo, by the way, okay. uh, that we're tracking right now here for you on the radar. So Morgan, you got about a half an hour before that gets to you. Um, she's a meteorologist. She knows exactly where to go to get us the best view, things like that. But if you're in Wapolo, you're not under warning now, but it's not going to be too much longer, we think, at this point. Yeah, and more importantly, she knows that eventually when to leave when things get really bad so you know the thing about having the beast once again folks is you know there's only so much only so much that we can see on the radar but the best weather instrument that you have are your eyes and at least when it comes to chasing you know you want to have experts out there that can visually show you or tell you uh, what is actually going on and how fast it's moving is it been recycling is it going up and down is it just a simple funnel cloud See, those are pieces to a puzzle that helps figure out the picture even more for us when it comes to doing this type of coverage. And that's why it's great that we have the beast out there to help us give us that coverage. More importantly, when it comes to be having Morgan out there uh, showing her eyes what is taking place. Uh, I believe we have a new severe thunderstorm warning, don't we, Andrew? We got actually a couple of them, don't we? Yeah, it looks like the line is uh, filling in pretty nicely. There. Pretty nicely. And it's, it's this line we're talking about right there on 218, making its way north and east. Conesville, Columbus Junction, you're in the path of this uh, particular storm. Uh, and in the warning, Muscatine as well, even as far east as Mount Hillier. A little surprised how this is kind of setting off. I'm surprised it doesn't even extend even farther east, but that may change uh, a little bit. But that's kind of what we're watching uh, with this particular storm. Uh, and you have the details on that. All I can tell you is it uh, may have uh, winds up around 60 miles an hour and close to 
quarter size with that uh, particular storm. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing too. And if you watch the loop on the what we call the reflectivity, what we're used to seeing on the radar here back home, you're noticing uh, some deeper, what we call deeper convection has started to uh, take off here and the latest scans just west of Columbus Junction. The lightning activity with this storm is also increasing, so that's a sign that things are strengthening. So I think the National Weather Service is just kind of taking the lead on this, going ahead, putting that warning out. Again, right now, it's not hail that's the biggest threat. That's sub-severe, but it's the wind threat that's increasing. And the wind was not really the biggest thing we were concerned with today. It was the hail right. and it was the threat for tornadoes. So we have to keep in mind about that too, but thankfully this specific warning, it's not that canary yellow, meaning tornado not possible with this one, at least for right now. So this is mainly a wind threat that seems to be increasing for Columbus Junction. Yeah, you can see the reds getting a little bit deeper um, with each passing scan on that uh, particular storm. Further to the north, I mean, you've still got that wide reaching severe thunderstorm warning that goes all the way from Jones County through Cedar County into uh, northern most Muscatine County, really just barely touches western Scott County. Uh, and that goes for the tornado possible tag because again, we're talking about these storms being on the leading edge of where some of that tornado parameter is. But that particular one goes until 515, that big, big warning. That could possibly, depending on what the storm near Iowa City does, get extended a little bit further to the east of time. Again, we'll see what happens with that. But that particular line may have a quick embedded tornado. Again, the strong tornado potential we still think is reserved right now in the near term for this cell that is moving just south of Mount Pleasant. Again, that's the one that will soon head for Wapolo. And if you put a trajectory on this, we are talking about this moving to the northeast. To put my little ruler back on here again, if you kind of follow that poly gone that does eventually sneak it up to us here in the quad cities are very close to it right around six o'clock so not too much longer about 90 minutes from now right we could be talking about some form of that storm right here in the metro yeah in fact there's some estimates going on with the friends of the national weather service regarding the the time of the arrival for that particular wave i mean to talk and not just the quad cities in around six o'clock 6 15 as andrew just mentioned uh but around uh, burlington at about 5 30 muscatine around 5 15 and yeah, it's, it is racing its way from southwest to northeast uh, at a pretty good clip. And so that's certainly the part of the, uh, the line that we are going to be monitoring uh, as we go through the next uh, hour and a half, two hours, maybe even longer than that. Uh, we'll go to our hail potential here. And yeah, I, I was just going to mention this too. I, like, I looked at the core of that and like there is some pretty good hail falling here. I'm not sure can we actually get an indication as to the uh, potential size. But my goodness, when you're talking about yellow, little green and brighter, let's see there. There you go, light green, a little brighter there. That's approaching uh, close to golf ball size hail, I believe. I'm trying to re remember my measurements, Andrew, on that. <laughs> yep, <laughs> Two golf inches ball is size. about golf ball size hail. Thank goodness. On the outside of Salem, you can see, uh, and you can see uh, at least quarter size hail that we're potentially seeing here, and that is just enough to do a little damage here, okay? So it uh, looks like in the, within the town of Salem itself, you may be out of the way of that one, which would be awfully nice, but if that holds together, New London, maybe Danville, uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that, and that doesn't strengthen anymore, but if it does, and we're talking about in less than 15 minutes, it will be arriving around uh, New London, Minneapolis, we're talking about just under a half an hour or so with that uh, line of storms that continue to make its way off to the Northeast, and right now the biggest threat is a little bit of that hail, but also a little twisting that may be going on with that particular storm that may be uh, showing some type of tornado outside of Salem. Uh, kind of interesting where the core of that hail is and where we're seeing the velocity of this actually right on top of that, uh, Andrew. That's kind of an interesting setup that we haven't seen in quite a while. But I think, I guess you can say when it comes to these classic, um, you know, hook echoes, normally you would see the hail shaft right here and just south of that you have the turn of the winds in this case a possible tornado just along 218 or so so I guess that's a good way to describe this particular storm Andrew that we see just off of 218. Yeah, and that could go to the shear that we're seeing today, too. There's a lot of good shear yes. that's in these environments, and that's kind of what's leading to this uh, threat as well. Not just the hail, but as you see the rotation there, too. And with each kind of scan, this rotation scan is getting a little bit more impressive, mm -hmm. a little bit more organized. We have to remember, too, that like James mentioned earlier, we're a little farther away from the radar site when it comes to this region. So we're not scanning the lowest level, but we're scanning a little bit higher up into the 
storm, but it doesn't take much with the kind of environment we've got right now to get that upper level rotation to get a little bit closer to the ground. And that's our main concern with not only this storm, but a couple others uh, as we go through the next uh, couple of hours here. Uh, at least as this thing continues to race off to the north and to the east. Quite a storm. Yeah, it, that's really impressive being so far away. And the, actually, the beam is actually going uh, through the middle layers, I believe, of the uh, of the storm itself. So it's probably, you know, um, actually indicating more of the mesocyclone. Uh, the, the, the actual tube of it going within the, the cloud itself, that's probably what we're seeing uh, right here off of 218. So as this storm gets closer and closer and closer to our radar, this is going to be even more well-defined. So we would not be surprised if uh, this warning extends even farther north and east. So that's the storm that we're really concerned about. And like we said, uh, friends of the National Weather Service think that this is the part of the storm that we have to be really concerned about for places around Louisa County, uh, parts of Des Moines County, going into Mercer County, going into Rock Island County, uh, maybe even parts of Muscatine County as well as that makes its way uh, off to the north and east. So that's kind of the line that we're looking at as we make our way in the next couple of hours or so. And uh, that's a good one. I, I, you know what? That's right. We have, do have a, a palette recognizing rotation here. Doesn't look all too great that we see. Uh, more pronounced when we looked at the reflectivity, but nonetheless, it's very hard for um, this part of our, uh, our, our model here to actually indicate some of that rotation uh, on the radar. And sure enough, we're actually seeing some of that uh, right there just east of Salem. And like I said, continues to make his way off to the north and east. And there we see in the reflectivity mode here, that's more pronounced. That gives us a much better indication of where it's going on. So we kind of are gonna really focus on the reflectivity for this, or I should say, I might say reflectivity, the velocity here with this as it makes its way north and east. So if you're watching us in New London, Make sure that you're in your safe place, okay? Make sure you put plenty of walls between you and the storm outside. Don't try and look for it, okay? Because this storm is maybe at least a minute away from impacting your town, okay? So it's important to get to your safe place right now with that storm just a mile or so away from you as we speak, pushing its way off to the north and east. This tornado warning goes on for another at least uh, less than 20 more minutes but as I've been stating here, I think given what we're seeing on the velocity mode here, uh, we're likely going to see this tornado warning even extend farther north and east. That could very likely be impacting, I say, parts of, um, of uh, Des Moines County and going upwards into Louisa County. So if you're watching us in Morning Sun, if you're watching us in Minneapolis, if you're watching us in Wapolo, uh, I think it's important to uh, start you know, making your way to your uh, safe zone, and I think you'll be in, in pretty good shape. We have right now Morgan Strackbine, who's already in, in Minneapolis right now, kind of waiting out just a little bit before it's going to be time to her, for her to move. If this stays just north and west of Minneapolis, she's going to get a view mm -hmm. of that tornado. Okay, I'm going to stress that again. If, she get, if that storm moves just north and west of Minneapolis, she is actually kind of, uh, we call it on the safe side, better viewing of that tornado if that does continue to make its way to the northeast and, and make its way just north and west of Minneapolis. So she's hunkered, she, um, she's hunkered, oh, she Minneapolis, I think she's in Wapolo, isn't she, or Minneapolis? Wapolo. Wapolo, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, still, that's still in the path of this uh, particular storm, okay? So that's what we're watching. Wapolo, uh, you're less than 30 minutes away from that storm that is, uh, that is approaching you. So my apologies on that. Either way you look at it, this, this warning is going to stretch its way uh, into these parts of the counties here that we see. And uh, as you can see, uh, Andrew went ahead and put the indicator as to the timing of this. It's only uh, less than 30 miles away. And we're anticipating, as long as the speed of this doesn't change, um, just before 5.30 itself, so that's, that's less than 50, 40, uh, 45 minutes from now for it to be reaching Wapolo. So Morgan's going to be hunkering down right there in Wapolo, and if she sees it changing a little direction, maybe heading in, you know, bullseye toward her, then she's going to get out of there and uh, make sure that she's uh, out of danger. That's the important thing when it comes to chasing storms, especially when we're in the beast. Okay, one thing we don't want to put our, our, our meteorologist or anyone in the beast in any harm's way when it comes to that particular storm. A lot of rain with it, a whole lot of lightning, most of that lightning being concentrated uh, just around where that core, that turning of the winds is actually taking place. So uh, that's a very dangerous storm. 
that continues to make its way off to the north and east, Andrew. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure it's got not only a ton of lightning, but the, the rain coming down in that uh, is obviously probably going to be pretty heavy as well. And you're right about Morgan. You know, she's going to be in the perfect position if she can get just a little south of that storm. You always want to be to the southeast of a storm that's moving to the northeast. That's going to give you the best view, especially if the thing isn't rain wrapped. That's a possibility, but we're going to keep our fingers crossed that we're going to get a pretty decent view of that. But I'll show you some of the rainfall here while we're at it the rainfall rate that this particular storm um, is kind of pushing out because it is impressive. We've got a lot of moisture that's sitting, especially south of the Quad Cities. They've had a lot more instability, a lot more sunshine. The temperatures are warmer. The dew point, that measure of moisture is higher. And there you see Mount Pleasant just getting inundated uh, with some of the rainfall here. Some of these colors are pretty high. Uh, off the scale. Now we also have to remember too, some of this may be contaminated with hail, but we're talking about a rainfall rate of about three and a quarter inches per hour uh, that is coming out of this too. So, you know, the storm is moving. It's not just sitting in one spot. So the flash flooding risk I don't think is there, but you're certainly going to get a good drink of water uh, as the storm continues to move off to the north and to the east. You know, the hail probability, we've been watching that. It looks like the worst of it's out of Mount Pleasant now, just north of New London. We put the hail size tracker on there. A little bit of good news in there too. We've seen that come down a little bit. Now not seeing as much yellow that we used to see, which indicated quarter size hail. Now it's mothball sized hail. That's a new one. They, I've never seen that Goodness. one. Better than I'm marble. <laughs> we have too many sized marbles. I, I to talk think about. You're right. We know what a mothball looks like. Well, I, let's put it this way, Andrew. It's <laughs> exclusive here at News Eight. Let's put it that way as far as describing the size of the hail as far as mothball size. You're seeing it, hearing it first here, uh, <laughs> folks, when it comes to this uh, particular storm. Um, for anyone who's just joining us right now, this is one of several warnings that are taking place across the area. We, uh, here's the Quad Cities as we see. Once again, we're in velocity mode here. Or excuse me, we're back to reflectivity. Uh, things are quiet in the media quad cities, but here are the couple of warnings that we still have in progress. There's that tornado warning for another 15 more minutes uh, for parts of Henry County, Iowa. And then you talk about parts of uh, Louisa going into Muscatine. That is until 515. And then farther north as you go into Cedar County, that includes Tipton, Clarence, Mechanicsville, Olin. Uh, we're going to be uh, seeing that warning go on for another half an hour or so. Uh, this has had a uh, tendency of producing not only some, a lot of lightning, but possibly of some hail, maybe reaching quarter size. Once again, just enough to cause damage if your car is parked outside, and that continues to make its way off to the north and east. Not much lightning with that, but some nice rain, and as Andrew just mentioned, you know, good drinking for the soil out there. We know that areas west of the river, especially in northeastern Iowa, need the rain so bad because they're still under severe drought conditions. So hopefully a good rain is taking place here and nothing as far as anything severe uh, that we're noticing at least some spotters out there as that makes its way off to the northeast. So we do need the rain. Uh, next chance of wet weather that we get around here won't happen until sometime uh, on Thursday. And right now that's more of a scattered variety, but that's a nice line that we see kind of racing its way uh, from southwest to northeast. Here's that tornado warning once again, uh, going on for another 13 more minutes, Andrew. And you can see on that reflectivity mode, a uh, good indication that we're seeing some twisting taking place. Yeah, now confirmed by the National Weather Service, by the way, we have a confirmed tornado uh, that is indeed on the ground and it's about three miles east of Salem. Uh, last update that we just got from the National Weather Service. So this is confirmed now, not just yeah. radar indicated, but no surprise. Yeah, no surprise at all. That's really nice. So you, you actually, we can actually see that given the fact that this is happening so far away from the radar site itself. Uh, the beam is actually making its way right in the middle of this storm system, not so much at the surface. So if this was actually a little closer to the Quad Cities, we would see uh, a very nice uh, twist going on here with the reds and the greens. The reds moving away from the radar, the greens making its way toward the radar site. And there's Salem right there. And that report was given about, what, a few minutes ago or? Just about four minutes ago. Four minutes ago. You could see that from Salem and now where it is, what we're seeing here, maybe it's just between uh, Mount Pleasant and New London, maybe actually more near New London itself. So once again, I think we're going to see this warning extend uh, even more off to the northeast. There's, there's 26th Street right there, uh, making its way of um, Nebraska Avenue. I think Nebraska Avenue toward um, Highway 34. That's what we're seeing, yep. that circulation. There is New London, and likely being impacted uh, just outside of New London, if not on 
the city of New London, uh, given what we're seeing here on the radar. So keep hunkered down if you're watching us in New London. Hopefully you haven't lost any power. Of course, the News 8 app is always there for you where you can actually zoom in, determine uh, if the threat is all said and done. By the looks of it, I think you have to wait another 20 more minutes before things kind of calm down for you. But that's what we're worried about. And if you're watching us right now, that same storm, if it holds together, will be impacting morning sun in less than 20 minutes. It will be impacting Wapalo in less than a half an hour. It will be impacting New Boston, even Joy, between a half to about 40 minutes. Okay, so make sure, even though you're not hearing the sirens yet, in these towns, it's a good idea to make sure that you are all ready to go to make his way down to your safe place, okay? Because we're likely gonna see that warning extend into these counties uh, very shortly here, maybe the next uh, 15 minutes or so, maybe even less than that. So that's what we're watching for. And of course, if this it continues to hold its own, it may have an impact in the Quad Cities as well, okay? Because that part right there, and you can see as, and Andrew sp uh, spreads out even farther here uh, with the zooms out even more, that's really well defined. So let's just say if it does hold together, when will it actually reach the Quad Cities itself? Once again, if it holds together, and right now we're still looking at about maybe around 6.15 or 6.20, given the information that our algorithms are showing right now, it's about 60 miles away. So if it holds together, we're talking about just after 6 o'clock, 6.15, right before 6.30. That's kind of what we're looking at for that storm as it continues to make its way off to the north and east. The air is starting to get a bit more unstable after that first wave that has now made its way off to the north and east. The air is still very humid, and we certainly have enough of that instability out there to cause uh, these storms to continue to track its way off to the northeast. How do we know that? We always like to look at the storm energy, okay? And you can see when we see that yellow indication of that, on our graphic here, on our legend, that's pretty extreme that we have a lot of storm energy to work with with that line as it continues to make its way off to the north and east, Andrew. And in fact, there you see popping up on the Storm Track 8 app a new tornado warning. Uh, it is likely probably going to be either an extension to that or we're going to have something new. So let's go to the uh, wider rate. And sure enough, uh, there it is, the new extension of that tornado warning for the one that we were just talking about. That's now going to take it right to the Mississippi River and right including Wapalo, Morning Sun, Mediapolis. No surprise with this. And also, if you, if you pay attention to the radar presentation, this storm, is really not having inter any interaction with any other storm right now. It's not part of a solid line. It's holding its own, which means it's going to be able to maintain itself unless something else develops in front of it that could interrupt its flow of energy. So that's why this one is a pretty big concern for us right now. There is another tornado warned storm, but this one is well to the south. It's not having any interaction with it right now. So far, that's out of our viewing area. But yeah, this is the main concern right now, especially now that we have that confirmed tornado. So that's going to go until 530. That's the new tornado warning. Again, this is a confirmed tornado. This is not one that has been picked up by Doppler radar. This is one that has been confirmed by actual storm spotters or law enforcement or emergency management trained personnel that know what they're looking for have confirmed that yes this is indeed happening so again new tornado warning now extended to the northeast of the original one new london mediapolis morning sun just to the west of keysburg and new boston this does go to the mississippi river and it goes until 5 30 and i'm not surprised that this was confirmed you know looking at the velocity data that we've been watching uh, the organization to this storm then what we've talked about the storm energy that was able to build with this we had a little period of sunshine before this thing came in. Uh, no surprise whatsoever. So this is an early heads up. If you are beyond this warning, maybe you're in Alito, you're north of Little York, you're south of Muscatine. We're eventually talking about the south half of the Quad Cities metro may have a longer term threat with this as it continues off to the northeast. Certainly very impressive, still on radar. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I'm getting some you know, messages from viewers and they think that the, the, the worst of it is over with. And they're talking about people you know, well ahead of this line, if we went to reflectivity, you know, we've been kind of talking about um, the two waves. The first wave moved down through with some showers, some wind, uh, some thunderstorm activity, making its way off to the northeast. Getting viewers saying, well, I guess that's all done, right? We're done. We shouldn't be interrupting programming. 
but we got to remember there have been two, there are two waves that we said we were going to be keeping an eye on. This first wave that raced ahead of the level of instability was still well off to the west, so that's why we never got any uh, really warnings in our viewing area because of that. Very unorganized. But we have a break here, which is building that there's a lot of storm energy still in between these, uh, these two waves that is helping this wave that we see out here blossom in a big way. This is the visible satellite that we see here. And you can see some of the kind of like you know, little sparks that we see here, little mushrooms that are popping up here, uh, north of Mount Pleasant, just south of Iowa City, okay? These continue to blossom even more. This is the wave that we have been concerned about for the past 24 hours, okay? That this would be the one that would produce at least the potential for a number of warnings, but also maybe uh, a couple of tornadoes, maybe even one or two strong tornadoes out of that. And that's why we're going to continue to remain on, on coverage here before the threat is all said and done. And like we said, we got some more warnings popping up. Another warning that we see now that has just popped up uh, for parts of uh, Lee County and going into Des Moines County, Montrose, Fort Madison, Donaldson, Denmark, Burlington, with that particular line, you just look at the cluster of the lightning strikes that are taking place here. It kind of defines where that could potentially be. One right here, but another one that we see uh, now in the northeastern Missouri, and that will be getting ready to make its way uh, into uh, Lee County, Iowa as well, making its way off to the north and east. So we're seeing this buildup uh, the, of the tail end of this uh, line continue to build even more off to the south and west. And once again, this is in a favorable area for some nice twisting of the atmosphere, these supercell storms. These are the ones that can track for many, many miles, okay? And when you're dealing with all that spin going on, some good shear. When I talk about the turning of the air, we're talking about shear. We're talking about speed shear, change in wind speed with height. We're also talking about directional shear, change in wind direction with height. And when those two kind of mesh, then you have the concern. And we've been seeing that on some of the soundings. We've been seeing that on some of the computer models indicating that the second line is the one that we could be seeing more than just these two tornado warnings that have popped up. We even had a tornado warning just north of Iowa City, which has now made its way off to the north, okay? So, good, so everything's kind of coming into play here when it comes to this second line, okay? That's why... We're still on coverage here. That's why we're concerned about all this making its way off to the north and east. My goodness, look at that. Um, can we find out here if we're getting some debris out of this? Well, yeah, we can go to the debris tracker and see if you're looking for a drop in those values. It looks like you got a little something That's there. a little bit here. And we do have, I know meteorologist Evan Bunkers is near Minneapolis. We're going to see if we can get in touch with him. Okay. Um, he did send me a really impressive picture. There's definitely some things cooking there right now. But yeah, this is a confirmed uh, tornado for sure uh, that is going to be coming out of this storm that's going to be heading for Minneapolis. We definitely want to make sure that we're taking our tornado precautions there. You've got very strong velocity speeds uh, that are ongoing here. I'm going to peel off the, the warning just so we can get kind of a sample of the wind speed here. Um, it's not going to tell us on the air, unfortunately, but I'll tell you here what I'm seeing in my white box. Um, 79 miles per hour wow. inbound, and it looks like we're close to about 73 miles an hour outbound. Uh, so a pretty strong signature that's going in. What that's telling us is that's the speed of the wind going towards and away from the radar, opposite directions. So pretty strong rotation there that's heading. looks like it's going to be just north of Minneapolis. Yeah, speaking of, that's where Morgan is right now. So we're going to go to Morgan and give us a bird's eye view uh, of what she is seeing just outside of her neck of the woods. I think she's in actually Wapolo, Wapolo. Um, uh, Morgan, can you, uh, are you there right now? Yeah, yeah, I am in Wapala. We haven't really moved um, our location from the last time that I was talking to you guys just because I kind of liked where we were. It's, it's, uh, I feel safe enough to be here. I didn't want to go any farther south, but I wanted to be able to uh, put us in a place where we can start traveling north and get out of this uh, warning as quick as possible. But I have been watching uh, that signature and obviously listening to you guys, but this is kind of the area that we've been watching where that signature is picking up that rotation and where we do have that confirmed tornado on the ground. So again, 
Right now, this is just looking south and west of the Wapolo area and again towards Minneapolis. Uh, we're going to continue to kind of hang out here for a couple more minutes and I just want to see where this thing goes and then probably start to travel a little farther north out of this area. But we've been getting a couple of raindrops start to push into the area. We've, of course, heard the sirens here in the Wapolo area as well, um, but a lot of frequent lightning also associated with this uh, cell that's beginning to push in. But uh, again, we're, we're going to continue to hang out here for a couple more minutes and then probably start to head north in just to make sure that we are keeping ourselves safe. But back to you guys. All right. Thank you very much, Morgan, on that. Uh, of course, we're going to now uh, kind of make sure that uh, we are going to continue with our coverage around here. We're going to be starting our program here at about 5 o'clock and once again updating you on all the warnings that we're seeing across the area, especially when it comes to uh, this one that continues to be the more pronounced signature out of the whole radar as it makes its way off to the north and east. And right now, this is the one that will continue on for at least a half an hour with that tornado that is on the ground, has a vivid lightning with it, has some hail with it as well, and continues to make his way off to the north and east. We're right now here at News 8. Your time right now is 5 o'clock. And we continue with our coverage here on News 8. And once again, you are seeing, once again, the numerous warnings that are out from uh, tornado warnings to severe thunderstorm warnings, even making his way as far north as around Joe Davies County, indicating a, a threat for severe weather, uh, severe thunderstorm warning uh, until 5.30 or so, um, likely getting close to quarter size hail with that, and uh, some, maybe some good rush of wind from those storms as they continue to make his way off to the north and east. You can see a lot of lightning just east of Bellevue, but entering its way toward Elizabeth in Illinois, just right there off of Highway 20, as it continues to make his way uh, off toward the north and east. Uh, I'm here, Andrew Stusky is here. He is in the Weather Center. We have Morgan Strack behind the beast. We also have uh, Shelby and Joe that are on the anchor desk as well, giving us updates as far as any power outages that may be going on or anything weather related that is taking place, especially with this storm that is taking place off to our south and west. We just got a report too out of New London when we showed you that signature, that tornado uh, uh, outside of New London, uh, power lines are down over in New London, okay? And likely because of that tornado that just grazed the town of New London, you can see now just east of Mount Union, south of Morning Sun, as that continues to uh, make its way off to the north and east. Now this is once again the second wave that we're gonna monitor here for at least the next couple of hours or so because this is a line that will produce more warnings around here and likely the possibility of some tornadoes as well. Not sure how strong uh, we're getting here with these winds. We had some inflow and outflow air that was clocked, uh, what was it Andrew, around 80 miles an hour or so. Uh, so that's a big concern, so we have that tight um, that twisting motion uh, with those kind of winds, that's going to cause some damage. But we've had um, spotters out there. They have confirmed. They have confirmed that there is a tornado on the ground. You can see just north of west of Minneapolis. Minneapolis, you may just miss out on this, which would be some great news. But if you're watching us in Morning Sun, uh, maybe out just south of Wapolo, New Boston, that's moving generally like so. Okay, it continues to make that northeast track around 55 miles an hour or so. And that's what we have to be concerned about. New Boston, hopefully you are going to be making your way into your, your safe place. Wapolo, hopefully you are already in your safe place. And hopefully you have a nice uh, charged phone so you can continue to monitor this in case the power happens to go out in your hometown. But that's the big concern when it comes to this particular uh, warning. Severe so thunderstorm warning. Yes, and we may be able to take, if we can, in the control room, meteorologist Evan Bunkers, he has visual of that tornado Okay. right now um, on the ground. I don't know if we're ready for him. In fact, there, there we it go. Is. Um, we're not going to be able to, to hear him. We can't get sound, but we at least have a visual. Again, this is live right now. Uh, he is near Mediapolis, and we're able to give you that visual um, of the tornado. Now, the picture I got from him just a few moments ago was a little bit further down, but, yeah, you can clearly see yep. something's cooking there right now. Yeah. It's too bad about that telephone pole right there, but <laughs> you know what? We, we, Evan Bunkers, he is our freelance meteorologist who's been helping us here on the weekends, uh, weekend evenings, and uh, uh, he is trying to get, get that there we view. Go. And one of you, yeah, that's definitely a tornado that is on the ground. 
That, I, that is a tornado that's on the ground. You can see um, the lifting going on, some of the debris coming up. Did you see that, Andrew? Yeah, absolutely. I yeah, mean, that it's is very a, faint, but you can see it. That is a phenomenal view that you've got going on there right now. The perfect structure with the wall cloud, everything else. You've got the rapidly uh, rotating mesocyclone along with it, too. This thing may be cycling, uh, and we're kind of seeing that presentation on radar. Right. It looks like it's getting a little more disorganized as we speak, but it doesn't take long for these things to cycle back up. It really does. And you can see it's... it's you there know, it you is. Can, yep. Oh, yeah. That's it, really impressive right just there. Just getting a little bit of the ambient sound there. You can see, yeah, well, exactly what Evan is seeing. And again, you're seeing this exclusively live right here on News 8 as we track these storms. A live look at that confirmed tornado that is near Minneapolis. I don't think you need any further confirmation than what we were just watching over the last couple of minutes, that if you're in the path of the storm, uh, it's time to take shelter. It is indeed. It's happening as we speak. Yeah, it's, and it's, you know, you like, I think you're right there. I believe it is recycling itself. Um, so uh, certainly very dangerous that we see there, especially within the path of that storm. And you can see how the tail end of that storm itself, you can actually see some breaks in the clouds uh, off to our south and west. Uh, usually one of those uh, uh, exquisite pictures that you see when you have that tornado and then in the background, you just see almost clear skies and some sunshine behind it. So uh, yeah, it's, you can see how the, low, the base of that cloud deck is just so, it's getting so low. And you can see the lift that's going on with some of the, uh, the dirt that's coming off some of the farm fields itself. That rotation is pretty quick too. I mean, it's amazing how quickly these clouds are spinning. Uh, just a testament to how strong that wind shear is today. And it's nice to see that at least for right now, we don't appear to be any over any overpopulation or over any population, I should say. It looks like we're kind of still out in the open, you know, country area. But uh, still, you know, we're talking north of Minneapolis. This is where we're seeing the rotation on radar. It's just about ready uh, to get along Highway 61, it looks like, to cross that between Minneapolis and Morning Sun. That's right where the rotation is right now. What a fantastic visual that was. It was. Uh, we will uh, we'll keep on that. Um, we're in communication with Evan, so if he's got something, uh, we'll be sure to put that back up on the air. But, uh, yeah, now you've got confirmation. You've got that visual confirmation. You know us. We're Midwesterners. When we hear the tornado siren going off, we're on the front porch. Where is that darn thing? Well, we just showed it to you. So now is the time that if you're north and east of this in this polygon, including west of New Boston and Keysburg, it's time to act. You got this warning until 530. We're likely probably seeing some pretty good hail with that. I mean, just by the, um, the, the velocity mode here. Yeah, I, just north of that, you can see it was kind of a yellowish kind of color. Very likely we're getting this hail shaft here and that purple, that's indicating that that hail is getting a, a little bit bigger, could very likely be approaching uh, quarter size. At least I wouldn't be surprised. Though the light orange, brighter orange there, kind of indicating maybe about a half. That would be some good news. We don't want a quarter size or larger because of course that would cause um, cause some damage. But uh, if you're in the path of this, certainly with not just the rotation that's taking place, that's kind of recycling itself right now. Uh, but the hail as well, Morning Sun, uh, Wapolo, uh, around maybe Oakville as well, New Boston, you're definitely going to be in the path of this storm. This is the strongest part of the storm that we're seeing right now taking place uh, with that circulation uh, from that particular storm. And here's the velocity mode, and you can see good indication there is some good rotation taking place now ready to hit morning sun. Morning sun, get to your shelter right now. Don't try and check this out, okay? Get to your shelter right now. Have your Storm Track 8 weather app. We got video going on, we're live streaming. So you can always check it out that way. We'll have the pictures for you, but don't go out there and check it out. Even if you're watching us uh, right now outside of Wapolo or so, don't worry about it. We'll get the pictures for you and show you what, how this is uh, going to transform in the next few, uh, next few minutes, but also the next couple of hours or so as that makes its way off to the north and east. Got a lot more warnings that are taking place around here, Andrew. Yes, and some good news when it comes to uh, areas north of the Quad Cities. We, earlier we were tracking that severe thunderstorm warning for portions of Joe Davis County. It looks like that has uh, shrunken up a little bit more in size. Those storms packing a good punch with some lightning, some gusty winds, uh, less than I would say quarter size hail, about three quarters of an inch is being indicated, but 60 mile per hour winds. So heads up Elizabeth, Stockton, Scales Mound, right along the Highway 20 corridor. These are tagged with tornado possible just because they're in an area where there's a little bit of spin. If we pull up the velocity data really quickly, 
Again, a little farther away from the radar, but I'm not seeing anything too exciting that's really standing out and screaming at me right now. This is more of a wind threat for those of you in Joe Davis County. Also going a little bit further to the west, far northern Jackson County, you're also under this severe thunderstorm warning until 545. Also tagged tornado possible. This is more of a wind threat though. Again, this is kind of leftovers of that storm that went through Iowa City. It's really kind of having a tough time getting its act together again. It appears it's running into an area that didn't have that nice little peak of sunshine like areas south of the Quad Cities did. Lastly, continuing here in the immediate Quad Cities, there you've got Clinton County, the west half of you near Wheatland. You're under a severe thunderstorm warning also until it looks like 545, excuse me, 515 uh, that it goes for those areas. That's for gusty winds. Some real potent storm activity right around Rochester there. Also moving to the east, that's a wind threat and a hail threat. Now quarter size hail and then you've also got um, an extreme part of Scott County and also Muscatine County. They continue with that severe thunderstorm warning until 515 quarter size hail and 60 mile an hour winds. But of course, this one also our big headliner right now with the, with the hour, if you will, because we've had that confirmed tornado with that. Yeah, in fact, with some of those warnings that we saw up into our north, uh, kind of questioning whether they will actually kind of extend these warnings. I think this one, that's kind of interesting, though, what you just went to velocity mode. Whoop. Let's go back Let's to velocity, go back mode, to velocity just real mode here. Quick. It was kind of interesting when I saw that one on velocity mode. Maybe it's just um, a core of some a strong winds coming down. I was just look kind of, well, it, it probably updated itself here, but I was kind of looking right around here, just north of east in Conesville. Yeah, right there. I was just like, hmm, that's kind of interesting. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, but other than that, going back to reflectivity mode, you know, there's not too much uh, that is going on. There could be more of a little bit of a downdraft going on here. Uh, we'll see if there's any type of broad circulation here. We might have to uh, let the, uh, our friends at the National Weather Service maybe uh, give us an idea, give us a clue if there is actually some a little bit of rotation. That could be more of a good rush of wind that may be coming down from the storm. But yeah, we got some of the lightning taking place here. Of course, that's always a big threat when it comes to any type of weather I mean, when it comes to thunderstorms. I mean, if it has lightning with it, that's a big concern as well. Uh, but making its way off to the north and east, otherwise we're not seeing too much circulation going on. So we're kind of questioning whether they'll continue with these warnings even more off to the north and east. Maybe this one still may have enough punch that we may extend this just a little bit more. But it's really uh, down to our south where we really got the better turn of the atmosphere that is uh, taking place. And that's why we have plenty of those uh, warnings that are taking place, at least a couple of tornado warnings that are going on uh, just south and west of Muscatine, heading toward uh, places right around Wapolo and even points south. You know, we had that first wave that moved down through, kind of really falling apart right now. Uh, that kind of raced ahead of the main instability that was developing off to our west during the late morning and early afternoon hours. So yeah, we had some wind with it, we had some nice rain, we had some nice lightning as well, uh, but now that is very unorganized and making its way off to the north and east. The question was gonna be, with that first wave, will it take, knock out all the instability uh, for that second storm? So we look at our storm energy, okay? That's one of the main variables that we look at when it comes to these approaching storms. And anywhere you start seeing the yellow in there, that's still, <coughs> excuse me, plenty of storm energy out there that could be fueled for these that approaching second line uh, that is taking place. And that's why we're concerned. If we're the two waves that we are concerned about the most, in the past 24 to 48 hours, it was going to be this second wave. The question was, how much instability was it gonna be able to use as it made its way off to the north and east? And you can see, even though that one line is pretty close, that first line pretty close to the second, it doesn't take much. You can see a nice break right here. So there's nothing that's breaking that flow from moving into that second line of storms. And you can see there's already some clearing taking place, some sunshine. This is a visible satellite picture. So you take your, you know, look down in space and you can actually see with your own eyes, and this is what we're noticing. So there's sun going on in the Quad Cities, down to Galesburg, Roseville. Guys, if you think it's over, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's not over yet. Okay, this is what we're concerned about with that wave. Look at the tornado warnings that have popped up that continue to remain in place from Louisa uh, down in Des Moines, going into Lee County, Iowa. All that continues to make its way off to the northeast. We really haven't seen too much of a breakdown. Some recycling of the storm, yes, but it's not breaking down. 
And we can notice that by just looking at the reflectivity mode here that we're noticing with this line that's making its way into southern Louisa County, just south of Wapalo. Okay, that is where Morgan Strachbein is right now. We'll eventually get her on the online here in just a little bit to see what she's seeing, but uh, what she's seeing right now. But that is what we're really concerned about uh, as that makes its way, getting ready to cross over uh, Highway 61, Andrew. She gave us a fantastic picture of a funnel cloud um, not that long ago, and I think we can pull that up here momentarily. Uh, also from her view in Wapo, in fact, there it is. I believe that's the view that she gave us. Wow, that um, is, an yes, wow. Boy, that is something to look at. You know, I believe if this is coming from Oregon, I believe it's a, this is her first sight of a tornado. I think you're right. I mean, this is the first time <laughs> where one of us here at News 8 is witnessing a tornado that is on the ground outside of Wapalo. That is, that's what you call a stovepipe. That is a tornado yes, right there. Yes, yes. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> because my that's goodness. basically what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Yeah, that's that's impressive. And you know, that that goes to the, the the rotation that we're seeing on the radar. I mean, that very, very organized, very strong rotation. Um, that's definitely something that we're now witnessing come to fruition here. So again, there's your confirmation. No further confirmation needed than that picture there of the tornado. Let's go to the news desk. We've got Shelby Kluver, Joel McCoy that have a couple of updates for us here regarding some of the uh, other information we're getting about these storms that are tossing through. I wonder if they could pull it up. We do have a live look over at the Iowa City Pentacrest, and that is where we saw the storm blow through a little bit ago. It's now cleared. I wonder if we can pull up this photo or this video for you guys, this live stream of the Pentacrest over in Iowa City. Uh -huh. It shows the storm has just passed through and the sun is actually breaking through. You can kind of see the last tail end of those clouds moving through, but I want to give you some while we pull that up right there. You can see that. All clear skies. Just just half an hour ago, that was dark and stormy and cloudy, but we are noticing some power outages in that area, especially in Iowa City. We do have reports of power lines on the ground over in Iowa City. And I'm looking at Mid-American Energy Company right now. They have about 2,000 affected customers over in Iowa City. Here closer to home in the Quad Cities, we only see about 90 customers impacted in the metro area. I'm checking the other pages as well. You know, we're looking at Ameren and I'm not seeing much anywhere else. So it doesn't look like a lot of power outages affecting our area as of right now, but that storm that's headed our way did just knock out power to about 2,000 people in Iowa City. Another thing that we're keeping a close eye on is the Quad City River Bandits game. Joe, I think you are looking at that. Yes, so the Quad City River Bandits, uh, as of their official Twitter page, they are still trying to play a game tonight. So Andrew mentioned how uh, us Midwesterners, one, we like to watch tornadoes. Uh, it was one thing we also like to play some baseball. So the Quad City River Bandits are still trying to play uh, against Peoria tonight at 6.30. As of right now, that game is still on. But uh, we'll see as, as these storms continue. And if you guys have any photos or videos that you want to send to us here at News 8, of course, safely. Please do not risk your lives at all. Don't risk damage to yourself, your vehicle, your families, your house to get these photos. But if you have anything for us, you can send them to 309-304-0888. You can text it to us. You can send it to us on our WQAD Facebook as well. I know a lot of you are probably sending things over to James and to Andrew and Morgan right now. They're busy checking all the radar right now. So if you want to send it to 309-304-0888, we can look at those pictures as well. Andrew James, we'll send it back over to you guys for right now. Uh, thanks, guys. We'll certainly keep you up to date with all that information, power outages, damage reports, and the such. We do still have that ongoing tornado warning, you know, still talking about this uh, just to the north of Minneapolis. Uh, you can see there's a really nice what we call a hook echo uh, with this particular storm, and you can see it just now uh, to the west of looks like Oakville. Uh, and just to the west of Keysburg and New Boston. Again, I think this warning gets extended without a doubt, just based on all the data that we've been seeing here. In fact, if I go back to the rotation um, tracker, it's still indicating some rotation here. In fact, we're starting to get a little bit of red 
on the map, which indicates a little bit stronger rotation with this storm as it crossed over US 61. There you see uh, Oakville on the right hand side of your screen. Again, this is heading off to the northeast and we're just about to take this over the Mississippi River and move this over to the Illinois side here, likely in about the next 30 minutes or so. You see the size of that warning has really shrunk. Uh, because again, we're moving this storm off to the east, but let's go ahead and put a track back on this so you can see where that area of concern is eventually going to cross over uh, to the Illinois side momentarily. We will lose this tornado warning in a matter of about 12 minutes here, but again, it will likely be extended based on what we're seeing on the radar. So let's throw this out and we're starting to get this a little closer to the immediate Quad Cities. I mean, we're talking about 23 minutes to Alito, uh, 30 minutes to Edgington, and then 35 minutes to preemption. So even though you're not under a warning right now, that may quickly change here, perhaps in the matter of the next five to six, seven minutes. So it's something you need to keep in the kind of forefront of your mind right now. Be prepared to take quick action here because this has been the main attraction so far uh, this evening is that storm for sure. And no question about that. And we have a number of uh, weather, uh, not just weather watchers, but some chasers out there as well, not only with the beast, with Morgan Strackbine and Scott Weezy, our driver out there who got an incredible shot uh, of a beautiful tornado that was just outside of Wapolo. Uh, but also we have several chasers out there as well. Evan Bunkers actually got some of that rotation uh, that was taking place uh, uh, when he was, uh, I believe he was in uh, more around a Wapolo or Minneapolis than Minneapolis. anything else. Mm -hmm. So we got some videos from him and uh, just trying to get on the phone here with other of our watchers, our, our chasers as well, storm chasers that are making their way uh, around Alito itself, kind of positioning themselves for that wave once it gets ready to cross over the river. So uh, we'll certainly be getting a chance to contact them, getting them online, maybe even get some visual from them as far as what they're seeing. But we're still not out of the woods yet, folks, because uh, we're still concerned about this line that we see just south of Interstate 80, getting ready to make its way uh, into uh, Illinois itself where we could be seeing more warnings that may be popping up. Like we said, this warning right here will be expiring in about 10 minutes. Uh, the rotation is still there, very likely recycling itself. There is some nice large hail going on, probably just uh, along 99 here between Oakville and Wapolo, likely in this general area. And that continues to make its way off to the northeast. So it's, it's not backing down. There's a lot of good flow going in the system. You can almost see like a little couplet going on here, just north and west of uh, Oakville itself, right there. So we could be talking about that rotation, probably getting ready to recycle itself and possibly uh, drop down another tornado uh, as it makes its way off to the northeast around New Boston. Um, we have a chaser around standby. Who is that, uh, who is that chaser? We're going to find out here in just a little bit here. Uh, but yep, here we go. Mm -hmm. New warning has come out and Yes, we're going, to, um, we're going to get to Ethan in just a little bit, our, our chaser out there. He was been in New London in just a second. Hang on there, Ethan. But uh, Andrew, you, can you get the details on this uh, new tornado warning that we have for parts of Mercer and Rock Island County? Yeah, no surprise here. We've gone ahead. This has been extended now past New Boston. We're talking about Alito, south of Andalusia. Edgington, Wapolo also still included in this as well, though the threat for Wapolo is going to be ending shortly. But now mm -hmm. taking this off to the northeast until 6 o'clock, this is for a radar indicated tornado. So it looks like we may have mm -hmm. lost some recent confirmation that this has been on the ground. It may have lifted, like James said, we're recycling this storm. And the potential for it to drop another tornado is imminent the way it appears right now. But yeah, that's going to go until 6 o'clock. It does include now, as you see on your screen, Alito. Edgington, still in Wapolo there and moving just to the south of Andalusia. It's very close to preemption, too, as well. Yeah, that's right. And once again, this is the same line that produced some damage in parts of uh, New London, even around Danville uh, just recently as well. And we have our chaser on the line. Do I get a confirmation on that from the booth? Do we have Ethan on the line? Uh, Ethan, uh, okay. Ethan Schissler, he is a veteran chaser here locally, but he also travels around the country uh, to uh, track these storms, uh, track severe weather, and more importantly, track those tornadoes. And Ethan, you're just in New London, and tell us a little bit about what you heard, what you saw, and what's your next move. Hi, James. I, uh, yeah, I was in New, New London about uh, 20 minutes ago, and we had a but about what you call a rain wrap tornado. It wasn't very visible, but you could hear it as it was crossing Highway 34. I believe I 
believe it crossed to the north of town. I can't be sure. I didn't see any damage. I stayed in the uh, what we call the rear flank downdraft on the south side of it. But there was a lot of strong winds. You know, we probably had 50, 60 mile an hour sustained winds out of the west. Um, so it's kind of hard to tell. You know, I've seen some uh, soft signs blowing down some tree limbs. It was hard to tell what actually came from the tornado and what came from the wind. Um, but, yeah, it was, uh, you know, I never really saw, like, got visual of the full tornado. I could hear it, though, but I never really got visual of the whole thing, um, except for when it was a funnel cloud, and then it got very heavily shrouded in rain. makes these very dangerous to chase, and uh, especially if you're in the path of it, you can't see them coming until it's too late. I noticed, too, that you've been kind of monitoring this as well before you actually started your chase, and I think it's kind of important to let viewers know that uh, this second line that we've been kind of monitoring for the past couple of days, this is really a concern as it continues to make its way to the northeast and mainly on the Illinois side. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, so the first line we had come through this morning, or, this, or this early this afternoon, really, didn't have a lot of uh, fuel to work with. Uh, we didn't have the sun out a lot. Well, now we have the sun out ahead of these thunderstorms, so they've got more fuel. Uh, more wind shear, more, you know, turning of winds with height to, uh, you know, produce these tornadoes. And not only tornadoes, but, you know, straight line winds and hail, you know, that can do a lot of damage, too. So uh, we're, uh, you know, right now I'm getting into position on this uh, tornado warning that's coming into Henderson County uh, across from Burlington. I should be getting a visual in, I don't know, probably 10 or 15 minutes or so when I get across the river. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Wow. Ethan, thank you so much. Uh, keep in touch. And, uh, you know, anything that you spot out there, let us know, and we'll get it out to all the viewers out there. Definitely. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, Ethan Schisler, our veteran storm chaser uh, here in the Quad Cities. It was great to have him on and we'll very likely uh, have him on maybe uh, very shortly as that particular storm makes his way uh, across the river itself. So there's one warning that we see right here. Um, let's go a little bit farther south uh, if we can because we got that warning until 6 p.m. for Alito, Edgington, uh, already impacting just east of Wapalo. And there's that other warning that we have to keep an eye on here as well um, that that uh, Ethan is heading toward. We had some power lines that were down around Danville uh, not too long ago, uh, around 79 there, and now making his way eastward toward Burlington. Uh, really hard to determine. Once again, we're so far away from the radar site, which is uh, over in Mount Joy, going into the storm, that if we see any circulation, it's likely right here. Nice job there, Andrew. Just north of Denmark, making his way uh, into uh, Lee County, Iowa. So that's where we're seeing the storm. That's where um, Ethan is making his way eastward there on 34, going into Burlington, and hopefully he's going to get into a position maybe just where the bridge is, uh, crossing over Illinois, maybe get that shot of that potential tornado uh, that may actually be on the ground. Um, my goodness, an inch and a half in size. We're talking about, well, that's about dollar size, would you say, Andrew? Or Oh, yeah. Close that's about dollar that. size. And it's really starting to show, my goodness, as far as where the core of that hail is, anywhere you get that yellow now. And once again, this is what we're basing on the algorithms going on in our radar here. We have that yellow, is like, that's, that's the least quarter size that we're seeing. And yep, and indicated uh, with what we have with our algorithms ourselves, uh, making its way off to the uh, north and east. So once again, but if you just joining us numerous warnings that are going on along this line where we're getting the rain we're getting the lightning we're getting the wind we're getting the twist in the winds uh, that are taking place along this southern flank of the storm itself as that makes its way off to the northeast you can see the tail end of that not right now just around fort madison just west of burlington itself racing his way off to the northeast at around 55 miles an hour And quickly at and, that, too. I mean, my yeah. goodness, I just hear an odd. I'm like, my goodness, that thing is just booking it right it up there. It really is. And that line still has to make its way through the Quad Cities. Yeah, so this, we still have a few more hours to go yet. And we said this is going to be a long, drawn out, drawn out event from 2 this afternoon until roughly 10 o'clock this evening. And that looks like it's going to be the case here. So, yeah, two active tornado warnings. You've got the one to the south there, southwest of Burlington. That'll go until 545. And then we continue to monitor this one that's been causing the most problems, at least so far. And in, in that with a confirmed tornado and some confirmed damage as well. We had the report of power lines down in New London. There you see that warning now extends into parts of Rock Island County even now too. It's not in the immediate Quad Cities yet per se, but it's not going to take much longer. Let's go back to the rotation, then we'll put a track on that, see if there's anything new that's developed. Still looks like it's still trying to organize itself. It's not extremely organized like it was, say, about 20, 30 minutes ago, but it's trying to recycle itself in some form or fashion. Shoot. So where the rotation is right now, 
Okay. Most pronounced as you go into New Boston, north of Oakville. That's where the strongest rotation signature is. So if you're in New Boston, yeah, it's just about on top of you. You need to be in your safe spot below ground or in an interior room if you don't have that basement. But it's an early heads up for Edgington and Reynolds. And eventually, we're going to be talking about this getting into the immediate quad cities, including the metro. So let's start with the tracker on that. Let's put where it is and where it's heading. So let's start with New Boston. And then let's have it move itself off to the northeast here. So we're talking about the Quad Cities just a little bit more than 38 minutes from now with a tornado threat. If this thing can keep itself together, and it just might, you know, it does feel a little soupy outside here. We still have some storm energy in play. Andalusia, less than 30 minutes before it reaches you, Edgington, about 23 minutes. And then getting into the east side of the Quad Cities, East Moline. That's going to be reaching you about 42 minutes from now. So again, this is radar indicated. We haven't had any recent confirmation other than what we saw more than about 30 minutes ago. But that storm is still holding its own for and sure. And once again, that's the same storm that produced that tornado. And for anyone who's joining us right now, and maybe the uh, friends in the booth can actually pop up the uh, tornado that was confirmed by our own meteorologist Morgan Strackbine in the beast while she was over in, in Wapalo. And uh, maybe we might be able to show that, but that's the same storm that produced that tornado that continues to make its way off to the north and east. So that's why uh, the sirens are going out uh, around Alito itself, likely around New Boston, and once again, continuing to make its way off to the north and east. Farther north as you go, not too much really going on as far as uh, warnings are concerned. This one continues uh, for about a half an hour or so, uh, but there's not much as far as any lightning with it. Uh, a lot of rain that we've seen, maybe a good rush of wind coming down from these storms that could potentially reach 60 miles an hour. That's enough to cause some damage, but nonetheless, not as strong as the activity that's going on farther to our south. Yeah, numerous warnings that we see here, uh, possibility of maybe spinning, have a brief spin up. As you can see with the more larger lines that we see here, the more the larger yellow box here where it's a possibility we could get, there's enough twisting, let's put it in the atmosphere, that could spawn a little brief spin up. Uh, but this is mainly a storm that has a lot of rain with it, maybe some good lightning, maybe getting a little brief couplet ahead of the line itself that could produce that maybe brief spin up. But this is a storm that is uh, not as strong as the activity that we're monitoring just south and west of the Quad Cities. You can see that second line. This is the second line that we've been keeping an eye on, and we know that this would be the one that would have plenty of warnings with it as that makes its way off to the north and east. In fact, you can see even some of the downdrafts that are coming behind the storms itself already popping up some little clusters of some heavy showers as well as those move off to the north and east. I think really the threat's going to be all said and done as we get to about maybe around mid-evening. We're talking about our friends, <coughs> excuse me, from Sterling Rock Falls to around Princeton. Things are improving there, and getting a little sun as well. So we'll continue to monitor that off to the north and east. The question is, will we continue to see any more warnings extending ahead of that? Um, it may likely be because, like I said, the air is nice and quiet, clear, still warm. More importantly, it's very humid. And that equals out to a, a good amount of instability that's going on. Dew point temperatures have been around the mid-60s. And keep in mind, this is April. So we're able to get those mid-60s around here. So that feeds into those storms that are coming in from the west and allows them to sustain themselves as it continues to make its way off to the north and east. Fairly good news that we're seeing here, Andrew, as far as the, the storm energy. And it may be throwing it all itself back into those uh, storms that are located right along the river itself. Yeah, it sure seems that areas south of the Quad Cities are getting the brunt, at least of the tornado warnings here so far early this evening. And uh, that makes sense because, yeah, that's where we have some of the better instability uh, that is currently present there right now. There you see that tornado warning again that continues. Good news for those of you in Joe Davis County. That earlier severe thunderstorm warning that has been allowed to expire. Really no surprise there. As we take a quick tour up there, there you see along Highway 20 east of Elizabeth now. Those storms, a little bit of wind, perhaps some pea-sized hail, a good amount of lightning and some heavy rain. That's about it for you guys. Again, these storms decreasing in intensity. Would not be surprised to see those warnings dropped shortly. We'll continue to watch this one, though. Just to the west of DeWitt, Wheatland, and Toronto near Oxford Junction. That's been showing some uh, signs of some hail production and, of course, some wind, too. There's your hail probability. It's not 
overly impressive right now, but there certainly could be some that is sub-severe, perhaps dime size, maybe nickel size hail. Again, we need quarter size uh, hail for that to become severe. But no surprise, you know, the two gangbuster storms we've been talking about all early evening long, those are the big hail producers right now. And the one near Burlington, just to your west there, that seems to be winning the hail race, if you will, right now, uh, where we have that quarter size hail just to the south of Middletown and also south of Danville, all of that heading up to the north and to the east. Kind of been a few minutes since we visited the velocity down here. So there you see that tornado warning continues. This one, we're so darn far away from the radar. It can be a little hard to pick out those areas of rotation, but there are a couple uh, that are present, including southwest of town there for Burlington and also one just on the northern edge of that right along Highway 79. That warning will expire at 545, so less than 15 minutes from now. And then, of course, we continue to monitor this one, which at some point in its life cycle, it did produce a confirmed tornado. But right now we're still on radar uh, indicated tornado anxiously awaiting to see if it's going to recycle itself because, of course, this is the one that would eventually carry itself into the metro. Yeah, and from this line alone, we've already seen some damage that has taken place around uh, Danville, Iowa, around New London as far as power outages, power lines uh, that are down. And, uh, you know, that storm that we had tornado warning down uh, around uh, Burlington itself, um, we just like five minutes ago was indicated of having uh, a funnel cloud with that. So, yeah, it's hard to see it on the velocity mode because we're so far away from the radar uh, itself that's located in Mount Joy. It's, it's really a challenge, but at least we've had an indication that there has been report of a funnel cloud uh, from this storm just outside of Burlington, and that continues to make its way uh, off to the north and east. So the question will be, will that extend. We're not seeing much on the radar itself from our vantage point, uh, but once again, uh, continues to make his way off to the north and east. Maybe little couplets are flying around just between Danville and Burlington, maybe even just east of Denmark itself that we're seeing a little couplet or two. Uh, so nonetheless, we'll continue to monitor that. Uh, right now, we will go to Morgan Strackbine. She is in the beast chasing these storms. She's already seen her first tornado uh, from this storm. So let's go to Morgan. And Morgan, let's find out where are you right now and what a joy it must have been to see that tornado. I honestly could not believe it. We were kind of standing outside looking in the distance and I was like, is that it? I had to take a picture. It was my very first tornado I've ever seen with my eyes. But of course we immediately got out of where we were because we wanted to get to a safe location. We are now in Muscatine. I'll take you a look outside right now. Pretty close to, we're in downtown Muscatine near the Mississippi River. But we are going to kind of hang out here. So far it's just been a lot of heavy rain. Uh, frequent lightning around this area, but we're definitely going to keep a close eye out on that tornado warning that is pushing uh, through New Boston right now and, you know, uh, Eliza, Buffalo, Prairie, Edgington. We're going to keep a close eye out on that, and I think Muscatine will be a good place for us in case we need to move over to one of those areas and catch anything if we need to. Uh, but for now, it's just been a lot of heavy rain, lightning. Haven't seen any hail with this so far, uh, but some pretty heavy and loud rain. Uh, other than that, yeah, we're just going to keep a close eye out on that tornado warning right now, and we'll continue to, to touch base with you in case we see anything. All right, Morgan, thank you so much on that. You know, you, Morgan's got to be the luckiest person around. I mean, just over a week ago, she saw her first total solar eclipse, mm -hmm. and now she's, she's just seen her first tornado <laughs> from the beast. My goodness. Unbelievable. I mean, for us meteorologists, it's a sight to behold to see your first tornado, but it can also be certainly, and I think most of us agree, a very frightening experience yeah. as well. You want to make sure, you know, when you've done this so long, you know that you can get that shot, but at the same time, be in a safe position to actually view it. And that's what she has done with her experience and such. You can see with that tornado warning that we see now uh, from New Boston and points north and east, a lot of lightning. This is a very strong storm, uh, supercell storm that is taking place. And around that concentration of lightning that we're noticing, that's very likely where we're seeing that potential rotation. It's radar indicated right now. It's really lost a lot of its juice like we saw back farther south and west. 
as it made its way outside of uh, Wapalo. But nonetheless, it's something that we have to keep an eye on because we've noticed it uh, recycle itself uh, since we've been monitoring this particular storm. It may be going through the same process as well. But you can see how close it is to the Quad Cities itself. Okay, so once again, Andrew's going to be putting a, like, a little line here indicating not only how far away it is from the Quad Cities, uh, but possibly the timing of it as well. So as he moves the arrow, you can see the clock gets a little farther past 6.15 or so. That's kind of what we're looking at as long as it doesn't change its speed. So you know, if it doesn't have a, you know, if we're not going to get a tornado out of this, we're certainly going to get a lot of lightning. We could very likely get some power outages, which it has already done that we've seen in some of our hometowns. And you're certainly going to get some uh, blinding rain out of this as well. A little hail can't be ruled out uh, with that as it continues to make its way off to the north and east. We can show you that it does have some hail with it as well. You can see just outside, and let's see here. There's Joy right there. Right now it's kind of in the open fields that are taking place around Mercer County. But it continues to make its way off to the north and east. So I would say, as you can see that hail core right now around New Boston, as far as the size, a little yellow there might be indicating about maybe a quarter size. And you can see that our algorithm are showing that on the radar with that uh, potential hail size that is taking place just north of New Boston. It continues to make its way off to the north and east. Could be impacting Edgington. We'll see how that transpires as it continues to um, make its way off to the uh, north and east. But, uh, you know, this has been a certainly interesting weather event that we've been noticing ever since last week monitoring the potential for seeing some severe weather when it comes to this particular day. And given the timing that we saw going the later day hours, when you have the peak level of instability and the warmth that we had ahead of it, you know, no surprise that the threat was increasing as we got closer and closer and closer to this date. Uh, right now, this is one of two tornado warnings that are going on. I'm not sure of the second one. It's still going on in areas just outside of Burlington itself. This is where we had reports of a funnel cloud or two from that. Uh, not too much going on, but can't rule out a little couplet or two, a little spin going on ahead of the storm that may be taking place, producing that brief little funnel that may be going on. But once again, so far away from the radar site itself, it's hard to get an idea. This is actually going in the middle portion of the storm because as it moves away, from the beam itself, or the beam moves away from the, the core of the radar, it gets higher and higher and higher in elevation. So that's why we saw that type of, I guess you can say, signature uh, when we put it in velocity mode itself. But reflectivity mode showing uh, a lot of rain with that, certainly a lot of lightning going on that can produce some power outages and could very likely uh, produce another warning. Oh, what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> A new severe thunderstorm. A new severe warning. thunderstorm warning. Uh, Andrew, I'll let you take it away. You have the information on this new warning that's out that could possibly produce uh, uh, more tornadoes. Yep, and this one, of uh, course, expanding on this, going a little bit further to the north, a little further to the east as well. Uh, that new warning uh, is now going to be in place. Let me zoom in a little bit more closer so we can see that's until 6 30, this new one, and you notice it's that canary yellow. That means that a tornado is possible. This is a situation where this storm could recycle itself again. It looks really messy on radar right now, but it's one of those cases where it may be getting its act back together. In fact, I've been watching the lightning with this thing in the last 15 minutes or so, and I've been noticing an uptick, not only in the lightning with this storm, but the one that's southwest of the Quad City. So we are going through that recycling again, and we are likely gonna be talking about this once again, being a problem um, for those of you that are in Burlington, Gladstone, uh, into Little York, also Seton. This is south of New Boston, and it is back into Minneapolis again. Though I think the threat for you, Minneapolis, is just a little bit further to your south and to your east. I don't think this one is coming uh, directly overhead. But nonetheless, you see, that's where the warning is. Let's put the tracker on it. Again, brand new warning now for that storm that was originally warned for a tornado. Now we have a severe thunderstorm warning with that tag tornado possible. There's your timing uh, as we get 28 minutes to Little York, 36 minutes to Alito, 
and then a verse eventually getting it into uh, Mercer County country here in uh, 39 minutes. We can give you a live look at the hail there. Again, yeah, there's some potential actually moving into downtown Burlington right now. Hail likely up to the size of quarters, and that's what's in being indicated by our algorithms there. We can also show you the hail probability quite elevated right in around kind of surrounding Burlington uh, at this point right now. So this is again severe thunderstorm warning tagged with tornado possible. That means we need to kind of treat this with heightened awareness. Be ready for this to quickly change into a tornado warning at the very last minute because this storm again is recycling. It's entering a little bit less of a favorable environment than where it was, say, 30 minutes ago, but we still have some wind shear. We still have some instability out there uh, that could certainly cause this thing to strengthen a little bit more. We also continue to see that tornado warning further to the north talking about areas of parts of Rock Island County and Mercer County. That's going to go until the top of the hour. Some good news, though, further to the north, where we had that severe thunderstorm warning earlier for Jackson and Clinton counties. That has been allowed to expire. The only warning we have up in that direction right now would be in northern Jackson County to the north of Otter Creek. That's also where we're seeing the possibility of a quick little spin up tornado. But again, when we're talking destructive and potentially damaging tornadoes, it's areas south of Interstate 80 where the better ingredients lie right now. I believe we had, I think the booth was telling us there's a view out of Alito going to Alito as far as what we're seeing out there. Um, not sure if we have someone on the line of Alito. Um, not sure who is, can anyone tell me in the booth? Uh, okay, finding out who this person is. Um, it might be one of my, our local chasers. I think Justin um, might be um, getting a view of this. He's outside. Is it? It is Justin. I think so. Okay, uh, taking it from his camera, from his storm chasing vehicle, uh, and you can see he is just outside of Alito itself. The darker cloudiness just off to the south and west. Maybe getting a nice little shelf cloud there as well. Uh, maybe out there in the distance that continues to make his way uh, off to the north and east. Hopefully, we'll get. Uh, uh, Justin on the line and give his own perspective of uh, what is going on from his own eyes and what that means uh, as the storm continues to make his way off to the north and east. But there's Alito right there within the tornado warning. There's Joy. There's New Boston. Uh, really, this is the brunt of that line that continues to make his way off to the north and east. Really hard to get um, a good feel when it comes to the circulation here, Andrew. But would you say it's kind of, well, my goodness, it could be maybe right around here. That I could think be we're, taking place. I think you're exactly right. I think it's just south of the county line there yeah. uh, where you were highlighting. That's where at least where I'm picking up a little bit. Very disorganized, but it looks like there's actually a pretty decent little rush of wind with that too. Looking at some of my other velocity data, maybe if we pop it back over to the other source. Yeah, there you can see some of the, the darker greens as you go north of Joy. Again, I know we're kind of talking about a more sparsely populated area here. But uh, that's where you could see that little good rush of wind, maybe a little quick spin up on that. But as we showed you on the velocity data, very disorganized. This thing seems to be having a problem getting its act together again. However, the lightning intensity has not waned yet. That's one of these signs that we look for when it comes to the reorganization of these storms. If we see that lightning activity tick up, or maintain itself, we know that this storm still means business, and that's exactly um, what is being on display right now. Let's do another tracker on that just to remind folks again of where this is going to be going. It is a radar indicated tornado. We have not had confirmation recently of any new tornado dropping on the ground, but certainly the conditions are present that that could happen really at any moment. Uh, as we speak. In fact, there's an update to the tornado warning that kind of removes a little area of New Boston. So now a little bit further to the east. And yeah, confirming that was Justin that we were uh, uh, looking at that view from Alito. Yeah, I mean, and ago. I think we may have, um, how many of the booth? Uh, do we, are we ready with Justin on the line? Justin Cardamone from, uh, from the Quad Cities itself doing his chasing, a veteran chaser as well. He, um, he is out in Alito. And Justin, help us with your eyes. What are you seeing there outside of Alito? Hi, James. Well, actually, we're right on 94, uh, just north of Alito, uh, facing the west, and we're looking at a pretty ominous storm, the one this tornado warning that you guys have been talking about for a little bit now. Um, and there's a lot of cloud-to-cloud -cloud lightning involved. We have not seen any rotation as of yet, which it may have died out. Uh, but it's definitely an ominous storm, and uh, we're, we're kind of keeping an eye out here for rotation and uh, kind of seeing there's definitely strong winds. I've uh, got an anemometer, and I've 
uh, notice the same winds at 25 to 35, guessing even closer to 50 miles an hour at times. I understand your wife was with you, and uh, she got some pictures of some of the mamatas that's taking place? Yeah, Amanda got some great pictures of, of the mamatas clouds that I sent to you and Andrew also. And uh, so we're, those were just actually are still over top of us right now. Um, so it's, it's definitely uh, an, uh, kind of an ominous sky out here, to say the least, but we're keeping an eye on it. And, and the winds will waft. You know, Andrew was talking about that a little bit earlier. Um, and I can def definitely testify to that as well. The winds will waft are, you know, I'd say at least a solid, you know, probably 60 miles an hour. Uh, mm. Wow. Is, is moving pretty quick. So uh, this is definitely, it has intention. You can tell it, it wants to really, you know, do something here. And we're kind of keeping an eye on that for right now. Sure, sure. And uh, a lot of lightning we're noticing within that core there as well. Uh, would you confirm that too? I can absolutely confirm that. There's been uh, almost nonstop cloud to cloud lightning right now. We've actually got somewhat of a shelf cloud developing right in front of us right now to the west. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we thought we saw that on the on the video that you showed us as well. Uh, really impressive, Justin. Um, keep uh, keep your uh, chasing going, and anything that does pop up, uh, let us know, and uh, we'll get you right back on the air again. Sounds great. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, buddy. Really appreciate it. Let's go to that radar and show you. Uh, once again, there is Alito right there. He's making his way uh, north on Illinois 94. And, yeah, he's seen a lot of cloud of ground lightning going on. Look at that. My goodness. From that wave that we see and that continues to make his way off to the north and east. So he sees some type. Not only does he see that shelf cloud uh, with that ahead of the storm itself, but, of course, we're keeping an eye. And he's going to try and monitor to see if there's any type of little rotation that may be going on. We might have saw something. What do you think, Andrew? That was just north of a joy itself. Could that potentially be that circulation that uh, we may have to continue to monitor? Or I, I think that's the, really the core that we have to keep an eye on. Yeah, that's going to be an area to watch uh, for sure. And you're seeing I just put a loop on it just to see if it was you know an anomaly or if it is something that's going on. And yeah, it, it looks like it is something that's uh, definitely happening there uh, for sure just right north of joy i want to put the reflectivity on just sure. for a second because i want to try and match that up with what uh, what that is and yeah I, I i could see that um um being something you know a little area of stronger wind there but on this velocity mode there you see it right there much better yeah yeah a little bit clearer view once again this is radar indicated we don't have actually eyes right out there but once again justin is making his way uh along illinois 94 itself and very likely he's going to take a turn here, uh, maybe getting his way on 155th, 135th Avenue, I believe. I think he's trying to race his way on Illinois, Illinois 94 to actually make his way on 135th. We'll see how that turns out. But he wants to get himself in a position where he's going to be not only get a chance to see this potential circulation that may be going on, uh, but also be safe as well. Okay, that's what chasers want to do. Priority is to be safe when it comes to chasing. So we'll kind of keep an eye on that. It almost seems like it's trying to kind of turn a bit more east than trying to make his main north. You notice that too, Andrew? That's what it looks like, yeah. yeah. And even on that latest scan, you're, you're still seeing kind of that eastward shift. So yes, I, that may be a gust front feature. Um, that, that could possibly be it. it. We'll have to give it a couple more scans and see what we see with that. But it, it's another reason you have the tornado warning, you know, a quick little spin up on that gust front possible. That's true. Yeah, a little pixelated right now. Hard to determine that. But yeah, we'll see what we'll kind of kind of make sure we keep it on that loop. And as Andrew just mentioned, hopefully this is not like an anomaly that's taking place on the radar signature itself. Hopefully we'll be getting a better clue on that and maybe get some eyes to actually see if there's any type of a rotation that could be going on. Maybe even a wall cloud that may be taking place uh, just north uh, of Joy itself. So that's a tornado warning that we have. Taking a look at the clock for another 10 more minutes or so. Uh, of course, the question will be uh, what they extend ahead of that. I think given what we're noticing, Andrew, you know, this may become... You know, maybe it might be even a severe thunderstorm warning. No question it's going to be a warning that is going to come out with this storm and likely going to impact parts of the immediate quad cities in just a little bit. Uh, given that this warning is going to be ending here in uh, less than 10 minutes or so. So that's kind of what we're watching. If that storm continues that course, then we're talking about a half an hour, if not less, for that storm to be approaching the immediate Quad Cities itself. Uh, of course, this is the same line has produced some damage, power outages as well. In fact, let's do this. Let's make our way back to the news desk if we can uh, with uh, Joe McCoy and Shelby Kluver and any updates that we've had when it comes to power outages off to the south and west. 
Yeah, we're actually going to be taking a look at I-80 over near Iowa City. I believe we have a live look over there, but it is closed. I-80 is closed near Iowa City right now. It's unclear if this is due to weather or due to something else, but as of 529 p.m., Iowa DOT says that. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, that doesn't oh, look like wow. weather, does it? That looks like a semi. Um, we're also tracking a bunch of power outages as well. Right now, Alliant Energy is showing nearly a thousand, actually more than a thousand energy outages near Mount Pleasant. If you're just joining us, we're talking about power outages, but this is a live look out at I-80 near Iowa City where traffic has completely stopped. We do see a couple dozen Alliant Energy outages over in both Clinton and near Dubuque, but I'm watching Joe Carroll Energy and it doesn't look like there's any power outages on that side of the river over in Illinois just yet. But we do see Johnson County, Iowa City, Mid-American still has about 2,000, nearly 2,000 um, power outages right now. Keokuk County in Iowa has just over 300. Uh, we see Van Buren County has a couple hundred as well. A lot of power outages all across the area. And we do want to remind you, if you're going outside, if you're going to be driving, especially if it's rainy, if there's water on the roads, please be careful. Use your hazards and do not put on cruise control. Also, make sure that you have an emergency kit ready to go. You have charged cell phones or you have portable batteries with you. And of course, keep that News 8 app downloaded to keep up to date with what we're reporting on here. Joe, you had some photos you wanted to share? Yes, we have a few uh, photos that we have. These are in uh, Muscatine. We got a few photos that we can pull those up in the back. Uh, one of them is from Blake in Muscatine. Uh, and of course, you can continue to send us in photos. Uh, either uh, you can email them to us, you can text them um, to us. And if we're able to pull up these photos from viewers. While that pops up, our phone number once again is 309-304-0888. If you have stuff to share with us, but please, no photo is worth putting your life in danger. Safety comes first in those situations always. Absolutely. Here we go. So this is from... Uh, Blake out in Muscatine, you can kind of see these clouds forming here, that ominous sky, uh, definitely a storm brewing. And we that's also that's have, the mamatas that we were talking about. Yeah. yeah, that's usually a sign of a very strong to severe thunderstorm nearby. Yeah, go ahead, Joe. Very that, interesting. That photo, clouds. by the way, is coming from Blake in Muscatine, so thank you, Blake, for sending that over to us. And then, yes, we also have another one. This is near Nichols, Iowa. This is... And such a cool photo to look at, but you can see obviously those dark clouds forming, but then the sunlight underneath it. This is in Muscatine County. Um, this is sent to us by Mary. So Mary, thank you for sending us this photo. Once again, as Shelby mentioned, if you're able to safely send us photos and videos, do not risk any injury to yourself or property to send us photos. But if you're able to safely do it, you can text them to 309-304-0888. We have one other picture here. This is in Makokata. Wow. Yeah, this is as the storm rolled into Makokata. This is Brett Massey. Uh, he's a great friend of Andrew and all of us here at Channel 8. Sends in a lot of cool stuff for us. But this is right wow. as that storm was moving in around Makokata. So once again, we've said the number a thousand yeah. times. 309-304-0888. <laughs> Andrew? graphic there, another traffic crash uh, to kind of make you aware of. I was just checking the Iowa 511 website. This is on Interstate 80 near the junction of 80 and 74. You've got a vehicle that possibly hydroplane maybe perhaps getting mm -hmm. off the, the side of the road. You can see crews are working on that right now too. So it's not just, you know, damage to property and of course us needing to get underground for these things, but folks traveling are going to see impacts with these storms too uh, as they're pulling through our region. So we saw the semi that was blown kind of a little bit sideways there blocking Interstate 80 west of us. Now you've got this incident also going on on Interstate 80, which is near I-74. But hey, at least traffic is moving along. That's the important part there. We're not seeing any significant delays. I'm going to pull back up the radar because I want to check out that. We have a new uh, severe thunderstorm warning that just popped oh, up for the immediate quad cities. There we go. So we're seeing that extended right into the metro. So let's get away from that here. We're going to load back up the radar. Just take one moment. Here we go. And uh, let's see exactly what that's got entailed for us. Zoom that back out. And there it is. Looks like uh, just a regular shape one, so we don't have a, the actual tornado possible tag with this. Uh, but it looks like we're going to be 
calling out for quarter size hail and 60 mile an hour wind gusts with that warning. And yeah, that includes everybody. Bluegrass, Andalusia, Quad Cities, all of the Quad Cities, just west of Kelowna, Pleasant Valley, all the way up to Eldridge. Uh, on this particular storm. A lot of lightning with that too. Yeah, and I believe our friends at uh, Radio Partners at iHeart uh, might be uh, uh, tuning into us right now, given the fact that we do have this severe thunderstorm warning out uh, for the immediate Quad Cities. But this is the line that we're watching from Walcott all the way down far south as you go into western Rock Island County, extending his way into northern Mercer County. Uh, this definitely has eyes of racing his way across the Quad Cities itself, producing some very heavy rain. There is a whole lot of lightning going on here, and a little brief spin-up going to uh, might be taking place, at least the potential there. We just radar indicated when we saw that uh, cluster of uh, lightning bolts so close to the potential circulation that may be taking place, possibly, uh, you know, somewhere around, right now around Edgington or so. We might have to keep an eye on that. Could be a little bit farther south. This is so um, kind of, we have, we have a live uh, from a chaser, I believe. Okay, so let's go with Morgan Strackbine. She is in the beast right now, heading to Edgington. And Morgan, uh, give us the details what you're seeing. Looks like we got some uh, flashing going on in the, in the distance there. Oh yeah, it's absolutely a lot of flashing that we are seeing um, across the area. It's been a lot of um, lightning. We kind of just caught up to this main line. We have been behind it, quite literally chasing this line. But yeah, I, I've been watching the, uh, the hail signature, so we're even seeing a lot of really heavy rain or it's hail. So definitely we'll be able to see that maybe in a couple minutes. But so far here, it's just been a whole lot of lightning. But I wonder if I can go behind. You can see the clearing behind us. So that's gonna come in very soon behind this pretty strong and intense cell that's moving through. But yeah, right now so far, just a lot of heavy rain. You can kind of hear me speaking up a little bit louder because it's actually pretty loud in here right now. But that's so far that we, what we've been seeing here in Edgington. All right, Morgan, thank you very much. Hey, be safe out there, please. I mean, yeah, we can hear that uh, rain pelting down in the truck itself as it continues to make its way right around the Edgington area. A lot of heavy rain, getting some lightning out of that as well. And that, once again, that's the storm that we'll be watching as it makes its way uh, through the immediate Quad Cities itself with this uh, severe thunderstorm warning out until, uh, I can't remember, what, what was the time on that, 6.30? 6.30. 6.30 or so, okay. But this is what we'll be watching outside of Edgington, making its way off to the north and the east with possibly some hail that may be falling, some very heavy rain. So we got 15 more minutes before the storm actually makes its way in the Quad Cities itself, into Rock Island, uh, Moline, uh, Davenport, Rock Island, eventually making its way toward East Moline as well as it makes its way off to the north and east, Andrew. Yeah, and we're noticing something too. You know, if we're looking at the velocity data, we're noticing that the storm's rotation, um, as that tornado warning expires, by the way, that's no longer in effect. You see it's disappeared from your screen now that we hit the six o'clock hour. Um, and that just popped up. We're gonna need to check that out. But I'm noticing the rotation. Do you notice how it kind of jumped the river? It's now on the Iowa side of the river, north of mm -hmm. Andalusia. It's broad rotation. I don't see anything tight right now, but the storm has kind of split off its rotation. Um, a little bit further to the north. And because of that, wouldn't you know it, I want to go to this, um, a brand new tornado warning that has now popped up on the Iowa side of the river. Scott County. Scott County, yeah. Let's peel that away. Um, and that is a good chunk of Scott County. That is a very large chunk of Scott County. You can see it on the graphic there. Let's put it full screen. Um, you're talking all the biggies here. Davenport, Eldridge, LeClaire, Pleasant Valley, that's for a radar indicated tornado, just because of what we were just talking about, that split in the rotation that we were seeing on the velocity. You can actually see it right there. It's by Bluegrass in Andalusia, how it kind of split off from the Illinois side of the storm and kind of got morphed northward. Uh, right now it's pretty broad rotation, but it is certainly something that's very close to Bluegrass. Uh, I've got a friend in Bluegrass. If you're watching, hope you take shelter right now. Uh, also, if you're near Andalusia, you're taking shelter. Let's do um, the direct path of that. And by the way, that tornado warning goes until 645 um, for those areas. Davenport, Eldridge, LeClaire, Pleasant Valley, all the biggies in Scott County, 
all the way to the Scott County line there uh, to the Mississippi River. You're in that tornado warning until 645, so 44 minutes on that. Let's put the cone on there. You can track where that area of rotation is going near Bluegrass right to the northeast. There's your time of arrival, North Park Mall. Uh, hopefully taking their tornado precautions, getting customers where they need to be. Eldridge, you're 16 minutes away, 20 minutes to Pleasant Valley, and 25 to LeClaire. Oh, pushing his way off the northeast, and at what speed that we get on that? About We are moving at 50. 50 miles an hour, and we've been seeing those storms on average move around 50, 55 miles an hour, so it's racing pretty quickly. And you got to keep in mind, too, that... You know, we're talking about not only the storm racing at that sort of speed, but you got to take advantage of the, the winds that are coming down from the storm. It's almost like, uh, you know, a little math problem, adding the winds coming down, adding the movement of this, and that can certainly cause some destruction. It doesn't have to turn. It can be a nice little straight wind uh, downdraft that's taking place. And what we're noticing, too, is we're now starting to really pick up the hail that is going on here, Andrew. My goodness, just outside of Edgington, it was just a little blip. I would say about maybe 20 minutes ago, south and west of Edgington, now we're getting some green that is approaching two inches, okay? That is golf ball size hail that is making its way just to, um, to the north and east. Just looks like, it was kind of weird, it's just south of that circulation, that broad circulation, Andrew, uh, that you just mentioned. Yeah, we, we've seen that a couple Unusual. of times with these storms. Usually you see it kind of intermingled with it, but... This rotation, especially with this particular storm, is kind of off kilter, if you will. <laughs> Very much so. And I think it has to do with all of the shear, with that low pressure being so close to us. Uh, but yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's, it's broad rotation right now, which is why we're saying radar indicated tornado. But the fact that it jumped over to the other side of the river and now is intensifying, as you saw with the hail core there, we saw that quickly go up too as well. Um, always look at the lightning product. I, I think that's another good indication mm -hmm. of, of what's happening. And you're noticing... In the loop here, we're still picking up on that intensity as it's heading into the immediate Quad Cities. You're seeing more bolts there. Can you actually put a tracker on this? I mean, you can see the core of it right here. Okay, so if it continues as such, it's going to be making its way to the north and east. So we'll be seeing a whole lot of lightning here in the Quad Cities. And in places like Plow, uh, Pleasant Valley, Port Byron, Comanche, it may actually graze our friends out in Eldridge, maybe near DeWitt as well, heading toward Clinton. So... Boy, that is a whole lot of lightning. And usually when you see a whole lot of lightning in that, you just have to be concerned about brief power outages uh, that may be going on. So uh, a little challenging as far as when, you, uh, when we are checking out this, um, this radar and reflectivity mode, but you got the severe thunderstorm warning covering the, pretty much the entire media quad cities. And then within, and you can barely see it right here, a good chunk of Scott County under this tornado warning uh, looking at the clock here for at least another 40 minutes. So around the immediate quad cities, Davenport, Eldridge, LeClaire, Pleasant Valley, you're likely hearing the sirens taking place. So once again, don't go out and try to see where this is. Keep in mind, there is a lot of lightning associated with this system shooting ahead of the storm itself. So make sure you're going to your safe place. All right. We'll take care of getting some visual out there. Or well, we might be able to get some visual even on our um, Bridgepoint camera possibly looking at this activity uh, just off to our west. Maybe we'll be able to pop this up uh, with our friends uh, in the booth here in just a little bit. But any broad rotation that is going on is taking place right here. Let me point this out. It has nothing to do with the Mississippi River, okay? <laughs> Let's put it yes. that way. Some <laughs> people may say, well, the reason why it skipped is because of the Mississippi River. No, it has nothing to do with that at all. Storms have a tendency of bouncing like that as well as that makes its way off to the north and east. Let's go to the eagle eye shot. This oh, is the top of the call building in downtown Davenport. And guys, in the booth, if you can do me, do us a big favor. If you can uh, tilt this up a little bit, if you can, and just to the right, Okay, they're going to work on it, but you can see in the top of your screen, uh, there is a shelf cloud right there. There is warm air lifting ahead of the downdraft of the storm within, and that's what allows the air to cool and condense and produces that little streak that you see right there. Nice job, guys. Maybe even pan it just a little bit to the east. River Bandits game supposed to be going on, what, about 6.30? I'm not sure if they've got the lights on. I'm not sure they're going to get this game going. It's not looking too good. They, they, 
<laughs> when talking, we're looking at Joe and Shelby if they're going to maybe have this game. I, they may have to wait till the storm moves on by. But you can see, can we actually do this, guys? Can you actually turn the camera, the, call, um, the camera, eagle eye camera on top of the golf building a little bit more to the east or to the right, I should say? You got a nice shelf cloud there, too. That by is the a way. real nice shelf cloud, my goodness. And behind all that, yeah, you can see the lightning just going crazy in the background. The camera doesn't do justice, but trust me, it is going on real, pretty fast and pretty accurate, pretty quick uh, off to our west and advancing toward the Quad Cities itself. Nice job, guys, in the booth. Really appreciate it. That was awesome. Let's go back and show you what, you know, of course, we showed you what's going on in the eagle eye shot, show you what's going on in the radar. Once again, there is Davenport right there, and you can see that. Is this on velocity mode still? Yep, still on velocity. Let's put it on reflectivity mode just briefly, and then we'll go back to velocity mode. But all that lightning that we just showed you, the, uh, the, the ballpark is, is right there. Trust me, it's right there, okay? Yeah, well, beautiful. Street level mapping right here. There's, there's Davenport, there is Rock Island. The ballpark is right there. And all that lightning we just showed you is not too far away, just off to the south and west. But where that yellow was on the reflectivity mode, that's where the shelf cloud is. And all that lightning we just showed you on the eagle eye, there it is. And it's moving closer and closer and closer to downtown Davenport. It is on the way for you friends out in Davenport. It is on the way with that lightning, that heavy rain, and hopefully we're not seeing uh, any type of spin up that may pop up, especially in downtown Davenport, Andrew. Yeah, and that's the concern. You know, this thing just recycling itself once again, except this time now we're on the Iowa side of the river uh, showing yep. that potential. It's got some interesting little structure to it. I mean, it's kind of bowing in and out in different places, and it's where it bows out is usually our biggest concern. And it looks like that's taking place just west of the immediate Quad Cities, like from Bluegrass down to Andalusia. That's kind of where we're seeing a little bit of that curvature mm -hmm. um, in the reflectivity. Right mm -hmm. It's, it's right. a little hard to see in the velocity data because, again, this thing is trying to get itself together. But there is certainly some broad rotation there that if it yeah. enters the right environment, it could come, become something a little bit substantial. Yeah, I, and I, that's why probably the National Weather Service, and they're the ones that send off the warnings, not us. They are the ones that issue the warnings. And they're probably on the same wavelength as you, Andrew, and I totally agree that that's why they threw out this tornado warning just because of that broad rotation that has now skipped over uh, the Mississippi River into Davenport as well. Let's go to the Bridgepoint camera in downtown Moline, and this oh. is actually looking to the west. Boy, that, that is ominous. <laughs> it's probably the best word I can describe uh, that. Then you can see the shelf cloud uh, right there, and then in the distance with the dark area is that's where the, the brunt of the rain is taking place and the lightning as well as it makes its way off to the north and east. Mainly on the, the Iowa side there in Scott County, sirens are going off because of that broad rotation uh, that we're noticing in western parts of Scott County, Andrew. Yeah, our National Weather Service office just posting they are taking shelter immediately right now. The National Weather Service wow. in Des Moines will be taking over as they seek shelter for this uh, tornado warning that is headed, yeah, kind of right in their direction. They're at the Davenport Airport. Uh, just north of town there, and they are definitely in the path of this uh, storm that's going to be moving through. We're still having a bit, a bit of a challenge with the velocity data here and pinpointing exactly where that tight rotation is. This is very broad rotation that we're still seeing. But again, the ingredients today support those little spin-up tornadoes on the leading edge of some of these stronger winds. So I'll take you back to reflectivity, and then we'll put a quick tracker on this. We're just about to get it over the radar site itself, which can cause some interesting things to appear on the screen here. So bear with us <laughs> uh, as the heavier rain gets right over the radar uh, site itself. But again, you're seeing some of this kind of bowing and weaving with this line. That's where we have that concern for a brief little spin-up tornado. And yes, that includes areas that are right through uh, the immediate Quad Cities. Let's go right through the tracker real quick, and then we have some of your storm photos. Again, that tornado warning goes for 645. Nearly all of Scott County, unless you live in western Scott County, that doesn't include you, but it includes the rest of you until 645. There's the Davenport Airport where the National Weather Service is in Mount Joy, five minutes away, Cordova, 20 minutes away. And we're also talking about this eventually heading towards Clinton. 
Uh, and we do have a camera view there too that we'll check in on a little bit later as it gets closer. Uh, and then 27 minutes to Comanche. But uh, again, radar indicated that doesn't mean you don't take it seriously. Even the National Weather Service is seeking shelter right now. Yeah, and that's rare for them to do. That, that is for sure. So they are definitely taking shelter. Our friends in Des Moines are actually now going to be taking over briefly until everything is safe over at Mount Joy to give us the information regarding uh, this storm as it continues to make its way uh, into Scott County. I believe we go back to the uh, anchor desk here with Shelby and Joe. Uh, more and more pictures coming in from, from the of our viewers, some of our chasers in regards to this particular storm making its way uh, across our viewing area. Yeah, that's right. The first one that we want to take you to, if we can pull this up, is coming out of Andalusia. Lisa Short works here in the building with us. She's up in our sales department. She captured a couple of videos of the storm rolling in through Andalusia. Oh, looks like we went dark. Not sure what's going on with our screens right now. Okay, we know that the booth is working on it. Okay, right there. Here we go. Okay, this is over by Andalusia again a few minutes ago. This was taken just before 6 o'clock. You can see the storm, that rain coming through, those clouds, very ominous. She is also reporting after she took this photo a few minutes later, she sent us a photo of some hail that she had as well. Joe, I think there's something over in Salem, Iowa. Yes, yeah, shall we? Out in, um, out in oh, Salem. Wow. Oh, this is from Wesley. So Wesley, thank you for taking this photo. Um, obviously a crash out there. Don't know if this was because of the weather, if the, it looks like a truck out there lost control uh, of his vehicle because of the road conditions. But yes, this is out in uh, Salem, Iowa, which is in Henry County. This truck overturned out there in rural Henry County. And while we look at this photo, I also want to point out, you know, I've been looking at social media and every video and photo that I'm seeing coming out of Henry County looks like there's some pretty extensive damage down there. A lot of it appears to be in some rural areas, but we are seeing some professional storm trackers down in Henry County, Iowa, that are showing, you know, fields full of debris and, you know, farms, houses and barns and buildings ripped apart. Of course, right here you can see a truck, of course. We're gonna go right here. This is Ashley in Illinois City. Look at those clouds. This is in Rock Island County. So this is just moments ago coming in over the horizon. Of course, we're gonna come back to a, um, the anchor desk right here. We are looking at a couple of power outages as well. I'm not mm -hmm. seeing a lot of jumps in power outages for any of our areas. We do still see sustained and continued power outages though. You know, down near Pleasant, or Mount Pleasant, excuse me, we're seeing nearly a thousand people, just over a thousand people that are out. Everything still looks clear for Scott County. At the moment, they're showing about two customers that are out of power. You can see right there, that red square right below Cedar Rapids, that is where Iowa City is. That's where 2,000 people are still without power right now. That happened earlier around 4.30, 4.15 that that happened. But or you can see in the metro area, it looks like it's okay. Now, Alliant Energy is showing a couple power outages up near Dubuque, down near Mount Pleasant. But other than that, you know, we're looking at uh, Ameren and uh, Joe Davies and ComEd and those all, or Joe Carroll, excuse me, and those all appear to be okay at the moment. And we've seen that Iowa City grow, number power outages grow over the past few hours. It was kind of low 1800s and now it's up to 1900, almost to that 2000 number. So um, they were hit, hit earlier and now that storm is making its way towards the immediate Quad Cities. And yeah, just moments away. In fact, we're watching that dramatic shelf cloud. You can also see some of the anvil tops of the clouds. That's the live view here in Prophetstown, which is, you know, a little bit away from the storms that are moving through here in the Quad Cities, but just a sign of how strong these storms are and how strong the wind shear uh, is as well. It's a very impressive line of storms. We'll go back to radar here and see what's going on with the latest updates here. Again, our National Weather Service is currently sheltering uh, in place at their office for the tornado warning that is still in place for a good chance chunk of Scott County that goes until 645. Very potent uh, line of storms that continues to show a lot of lightning. I want to see if we've uh, changed anything up in terms of the hail potential with this. It appears for the moment that that threat has quickly mm. de-escalated. That is some uh, good news. Itself. Yeah, so that is some really, really good news there. It looks mm. like we've lost the, the hail core and also checking in on the velocity data too. It's still a very broad area of rotation that is moving through. Again, can't really rule out a quick little spin up with this, 
Uh, but right now, radar indicated rotation is what we're basing this off of. And we're also noticing with that severe thunderstorm warning that's also accompanied by that, that's getting rain to make its way in the immediate quad cities. I want to focus on the severe thunderstorm warning south of these warnings that we see here. We got to be concerned about this that's making its way uh, in parts of northern Henderson County and going into Mercer County. Uh, a lot of lightning going on here, but uh, if we went to uh, the hail, I'm a little concerned in what we're seeing here just outside of Seton. Look at this that we see just out of Alito itself. My goodness, we might be getting some decent hail coming out of this, maybe at least quarter size. There is a green in there indicating maybe golf ball size that could be falling here, pushing his way off to the north and east. Here's our Bridgepoint wow. camera looking to the west. Once again, very ominous that we see the white clouds you see, that's indicating the shelf cloud. This is being, uh, the reason why we're seeing this is the warm air being lifted ahead of that storm itself. Uh, the cool air rushing down below it, and that's why you're getting that shelf cloud, cloud appearance. Now you can see that making its way into downtown Davenport, a blinding rain. You can see in the left-hand corner uh, with the lights on the field itself, you can see the rain and the wind that's just being associated with this line that's pushing on through. So a uh, pretty dangerous situation that we're dealing with here. And uh, hopefully we're not dealing with any type of serious type of rotation that is going on. But uh, no question, some blinding rain, wind, lightning taking place. And you can see with the rainfall rate that we see getting ready to make its way uh, it, at the ballpark there in downtown Davenport, that rain is really coming down. Could have actually get some a uh, little bit of hail out of that as well as we just noticed. Maybe not large, but uh, certainly some hail uh, that may be producing uh, that visibility from really dropping as it makes its way in the southwestern Davenport. Andrew, I believe we have, uh, we have Morgan on the line, I believe, um, just outside of Andalusia. Uh, Morgan, are you there? Tell us what you are seeing. Yes, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Um, right now we are quite literally just between Andalusia and Milan. You can see the clearing out in front of it, so we're kind of getting in front of this line now, but so far a lot of heavy rain passing through Andalusia. I mean, these, this road, Andalusia Road, so much standing water on there, and I just want to point that out to people. It is, it, it's a little dicey to be out there on the roads with that standing water, even the beast it kind of struggles through going uh, through some of those larger puddles. But again, we're just ahead of now that line and pushing into Milan. Of course, I've been watching this uh, severe thunderstorm. Okay, we just lost uh, with Morgan. I think we just maybe being out in the outfield, open fields and such, we kind of lost that connection. So we'll get to that in just a little bit. So we saw the rain. Uh, just pounding areas in downtown Davenport, and you can see it's just getting ready to make its way uh, uh, across the I-74 bridge itself. Amazing the visibility that we see now and what we saw with our eagle eye on top of the call building in downtown Davenport where the rain was just blinding. It's amazing the change we expect to see here in just moments as a storm continues to uh, make his way eastward. But uh, nonetheless, a very dangerous situation. This is part of the storm that uh, still has a tornado warned uh, a part of the storm with it in Scott County itself. So once again, this is Bridgepoint camera. This is downtown Davenport. My goodness, you, you, can't have, you can barely see yeah. the Centennial Bridge. That is how heavy this rain is taking place in downtown Davenport, and certainly indicative with the lights over at uh, Modern Woodman Park there, you can see the sheets of rain that is taking place there, Andrew. Yeah, and we have a game that's supposed to start in what, uh, 10 minutes? They said it's delayed. Or have they delayed it now? I would hope okay. so, it's delayed. I was say, my goodness. <laughs> I don't think that's happening. I think that one's going to be getting <laughs> Yeah, Goodness. may be a little bit of a, of a creek or river that may be developing right there on, on left field, I think. I wouldn't be surprised uh, with that blinding rain that is taking place. My goodness, we haven't seen a, a sight like that in a long time. And like we said, it may be okay here in the Moline area, East Moline, Bettendorf, but that's going to be changing quickly. You get that sheet of rain you can see right there, and you can see its relationship to uh, Bettendorf itself. Um, 
course, here is the arsenal right here, uh, getting ready to be pounded by some of that rain. It's funny, you see maybe the western side of, uh, of the arsenal getting pounded with the rain. On the other end of the island, it's just starting to see some of the raindrops take place. Let's shift this a little bit more to the left there, or we can do it that way. There's downtown Moline right here. Okay, here's the I-74 bridge, our Bridgepoint camera actually located here. Right there. In the darkness of the clouds out to the west, the very heavy rain that's going on, maybe some hail, maybe a good rush of wind coming down from the storm itself, making its way uh, off toward the east. So watching us in Bettendorf, watching us in Pleasant Valley, it's slowly advancing in your general direction. I wouldn't recommend going out with all that blinding rain that we just showed you uh, over in downtown Davenport. You know, we can, it's great to have those eyes out there, especially with our cameras that we have scoured across uh, in and around the Quad Cities itself from here all the way to Iowa City. So a blinding rain that is going on with some of that um, lightning that is taking place too, as well as some of the hail. And once again, tornado warning still out for all of Scout County. Uh, until about 6.30, I believe, uh, Andrew, on that. He's nodding his head, yes. Whew, there's so many warnings going on around, but that is really impressive that the actual uh, sh uh, shelf cloud itself now just crossing the I-74 bridge itself, and out there in the distance off the left, left is the lightning that's taking place and the very heavy rain that is going on as well. So visibility may be good here for now, but we're just maybe a couple of minutes or so away from that to become uh, a blinding rain that may be taking place. Uh, once again, we want to update you a new, is this a new severe thunderstorm warning that is out until 7.15 for parts of Alito, um, Orion, and going into preemption. Uh, right now, indications by the radar itself that we could be getting maybe close to, we have by nickel size, approaching quarter size, and winds may be uh, approaching 60 miles an hour enough to do some damage. We're in the hail possibility here, uh, kind of on the moderate end here, that was all kind of bright here from Seton to Alito. Uh, nonetheless, we might be getting a little bit of some uh, small hail out of this, like I said, potential of maybe seeing some nickel size hail from Seton just south of Alito as it continues to make its way off to the south and east. A lot of rain, the core of that hail, uh, indicative of where we're seeing the, all this lightning kind of centered itself uh, between Seton and even around Alito. And then we have another severe thunderstorm warning out uh, for areas just south of that. Potential of maybe seeing some possible rotation when it comes to uh, this line from 61 that we see from Minneapolis, which um, we saw some very heavy rain and lightning with that and moving its way uh, off toward the east. Uh, could be getting some potential, maybe little couplets that may be developing ahead of that, which when we say couplets, we're talking about maybe some brief spin-ups uh, ahead of the storm itself. Uh, but uh, right now, um, nothing as of yet, but that solid yellow that we're seeing right there usually is an indication of possible rotation. Like I said, possible little couplets that may be popping up within there as well. And I believe this is a new severe thunderstorm warning. Andrew, I'll let you take it away from there. Yep, that's a new severe thunderstorm warning that now kind of out goes or goes beyond rather, I should say that tornado warning for Scott County. Just pulling up the details on this. You've got this for northeastern Rock Island County, northwestern Whiteside County, eastern Scott County and eastern Clinton County, and that's going to go until 645. Uh, you're threat with that is going to be 60 mile per hour wind gusts and also nickel size hail. But again, it's one of those things that we have to watch because this is a storm that is just now coming out of a tornado warned area. In fact, about seven to eight minutes ago, we had a train spotter that was near Jersey Ridge Road in Davenport reporting some rotation being seen with this storm. That rotation is now likely up around the I-74 in Interstate 80 corridor. We haven't received any further reports with that, but I do want to make you aware that this is one of those situations that could once again escalate quickly if this storm were to have the right interaction. So right now the concern again is going to be with wind primarily, 60 mile per hour wind gusts. So that does include Lomore, Clinton, Eldridge, Cordova, Pleasant Valley. It also includes, as you can see there, LeClaire and Davenport. It doesn't necessarily replace the tornado warning. Again, that continues for a little while longer here, but now we're just giving another kind of additional heads up for those of you that are northeast of this storm. Let's put the tracker back on it. We'll take it right off to the northeast here. There's your estimated times of arrivals. Eldridge is seven minutes away. 
McCausland, you got about 17 minutes there, 26 minutes to Comanche, and then 32 minutes to Clinton. A reminder, we have a camera there. We'll check in with that here shortly as the storm gets a little bit closer, see what kind of a view um, it has to offer us here. No confirmed reports of large hail, damaging winds or wind damage for that fact right now. But remember, our National Weather Service is currently seeking shelter. Des Moines is taking over for them, so it may take a couple of extra minutes here to get some of those damage reports in should they have occurred because those folks are currently protecting their lives as they should. They're under a tornado warning, practicing again what we preach as meteorologists. Don't forget, we also have that uh, severe thunderstorm warning even further to the south. Viola, you're included in this along with Matherville and preemption. We're talking 60 mile an hour wind gusts and sub severe hail with this storm. We'll put a quick tracker on that one too. It's also kind of getting its act together. Notice you have that little forward comma shape just now out of Alito into Viola, indicating that's where we're going to have that stronger punch of wind. You kind of put the velocity on there. Not too exciting in terms of the rotation factor, but yeah, there's some gusty winds. Throwing the tracker on that gets it into Viola about 11 minutes from now, 18 to New Windsor, and then Orion at about uh, 26 minutes uh, away from now. Other than that, you know, things have really quieted down the north half of the Quad Cities. Those warnings have been allowed to expire except for this new one that we've been highlighting there in Clinton County. Notice down just some heavy rain and some lightning, perhaps some pea-sized hail, Joe Davis County into parts of Jackson, Clinton. The rest of that uh, quieting down. Now, of course, we're focusing on the Quad Cities in areas just to the south of us that we're seeing right now. There have been reports of some broad rotation that has been going on. <clears throat> if we can go to the I-70, uh, go to the Bridgepoint camera if we can. There's been reports of some very slow rotation that has been going on. And this is uh, reported by uh, Scott County Sheriff Deputy of some um, of slow rotation over the Waterfront Convention Center over in Bettendorf, and we can, can tell that the convention center is, you know, if you look right there, right of the arch of the I-74 bridge with those lights right around the Isle of Capri, and you go a little bit east of that, there has been talk about some broad rotation that may be going on. Um, of course, now we're looking at it, it's a little hard to see, but uh, something that has been reported um, not only um, from uh, one spotter, but a couple as well, we have to and then pan down a little bit. It's really hard to tell. It's really hard to tell. Let's see if we just stretch it down just a little bit more. Really hard to tell right now, but this is what we're getting reports on of some possible broad rotation that may be taking place uh, just maybe now east of the convention center. Let's just zoom back out, but pretty ominous sight that we're seeing uh, that's taking place with that shelf cloud now <clears throat> making its way uh, over the area and the, the sheets of rain that are coming down as we just showed you uh, over in downtown Davenport and certainly getting ready to make its way uh, across the bridge itself. You can see some of that rain that may be taking place, even might be even mixed in with some, uh, some hail as well, kind of showing that kind of almost green appearance that may be going on, but no question some blinding rain that is going on, uh, especially just north of the river itself into Iowa. So if you're watching us right now, just stay hunkered down. If you were getting ready to go out, uh, let the storm pass on through, give it another 45 minutes or so, and uh, things should be improving nicely visibility-wise uh, after that. Let's go and go right to downtown Alito itself. Visibility looking pretty good, and that rain is really coming down, Andrew, I tell you. Yeah, it's, goodness. It, it's in buckets. We saw rainfall rates on the radar in excess of three inches per hour. Thankfully, you know, we can still survive a good drink of water. We've been in right. the drought conditions for so long, now getting a little bit better. But this is another, you know, impact that we're seeing. And remember, we're still on evening commute time. It's approaching 630. There's still some folks getting off work that are going to have to drive in this. So you don't want to use the cruise control. You do want to have your headlights on. I know it's still daylight, but I can't tell you how many people I see still driving out there with those darn LED daytime running lamps on. Those are not <laughs> sufficient, folks. We need the full enchilada, the full headlights on when we're in the rain <laughs> because we want to see you. I want to see your car, especially if it's coming at me and you want to be able to see my car too. So keep that in mind. But yeah, definitely seeing the broad rotation on the, on the radar there. We'll continue to watch that rain coming down. Let's go back to the desk, guys.
All right, so we are tracking some power outages right now. I am getting some messages and some text messages that there's power down near Viola, Alito, but I'm not seeing anything on MidAmerican Ameren's website right now, so we'll continue to watch that. But we do have some photos that we want to show you right now if we can pull this one up here. I think this first one, Joe, where was this first one from? Yeah, this first one looks to be in, in Minneapolis here. Uh, we have a, a, a video, I believe, uh, wow. Yeah, this video here of a tornado touching down in Minneapolis. Look at this video. Now, this does need to be confirmed. We do want yes. to reiterate and that. This is another photo. Uh, that was in Illinois City. That's in Rock Island County. And this video here in Minneapolis, as Shelby mentioned, um, has not been confirmed. This photo also from Minneapolis. You can see those funnel clouds. And if you guys want to, if you're able to safely send us photos or videos, that number is 309-304-0888. Also, uh, we can get them if you share them on Facebook. And Deanna, could you pull up this photo or the video from downtown Davenport? Yeah, let's pull this up. I know the sirens were going off in downtown Davenport. Now, we're not going to play you the sirens here on air. We're not going to broadcast that, but... Look at that. We just saw the bridge point view of this. This is from down below, Jenna Webster, down in downtown Davenport, sending us this in. You can see all of that lightning right there. And Morgan mentioned it a little bit earlier. When we're driving in these rainy conditions, please, please, please be careful. Andrew was just saying, make sure you have your high beat or your lights on, but also make sure that you are not using cruise control when you're driving in these rainy, super rainy conditions. And even here in the studio in the last 10 oh minutes, God. It has felt like someone <laughs> turned on the AC. We could feel that wind yeah. from outside. You could feel the hear storm. The rain outside. Yeah, you can hear the rain up on our studio roof, but you could literally feel the storm moving in, that cold air moving in. But man, look at those clouds. Gray conditions down in downtown Davenport right now. But of course, I and again, I am keeping an eye on these power outages. Yes, yeah, like so I said, far still none in the immediate Quad Cities. Uh, Mid-American says it has one in the Iowa side of the Quad Cities. But, um, and that number in Iowa City has stayed right around that 1900 number. So um, that number potentially could rise here in the immediate Quad Cities. But of course, you know, these, the websites aren't always incredibly accurate right. or up to date as well. So we know that there is power out around the Viola area and that's not showing online as well. So we'll continue to keep watching that. James? Yeah, and what's interesting here is that, you know, some of the video that we've uh, uh, showed you so far, uh, one was from Evan Bunkers, our freelance meteorologist who works on the weekend evenings here. So we want to thank Evan on that. I think, I'm not sure if he's doing any more chasing, let's put it that way. Uh, and then, of course, Morgan Strachbein uh, got her first chance to see a tornado on the ground uh, outside of Wapalo. Um, and it was an amazing sight to see. Got a still picture of it. First time she's ever seen a tornado. She saw a, a total solar eclipse. It was over a week ago. She's a lucky woman right now. Let's put it that way. Able to see some, uh, some incredible views going on. Rare phenomena, as I guess you can say, that is going on. Right now, plenty of uh, severe thunderstorm warnings that are taking place. But it appears to be the good news here is the tornado warning. The tornado warning that we had for Scott County has been let go. So that is some fairly good news. Uh, but nonetheless, these warnings that we see here are issued for a reason. And we're talking about some hail. We're talking about some strong winds. We're talking about a lot of cloud of ground lightning going on. And we're talking about some blinding rain. With all three of these warnings that continue on for at least another half an hour to about 45 minutes or so. So that's what we're keeping an eye on. You can see some of the lightning going on. There was some actually some broad rotation going on uh, just north of Alito itself that we were keeping an eye on. Uh, but nonetheless, some very heavy rain that we see off of Highway 67 there continues to make its way off to the north and east. So watching us from Orion uh, around preemption itself, Sherrard. If you're watching us from Sherrard, uh, make sure you are in your safe place. It has a lot of blinding rain going on. Even a little a couplet that we see right there, uh, just south of Preemption, right there in 67. That's something to be a little concerned about. A little couplet could be a little twist going on. Maybe a little brief tornado that may be going on just south of Preemption itself. You can almost see that light blue and then you get that green. You can see almost that little rotation that's going on there. Okay, we'll have to keep an eye on that. But there is the couplet right there. See the little twist? See yeah. a little twist right there? Yeah, that is something we'll have to keep an eye on. You're watching us from preemption. Uh, might be a good idea to get in that uh, safe place if, if you can. But there, look at the couplet right there. 
just north of Ridge Road, uh, just north of Matherville there. Uh, that is a nice little couplet that's going on. So that's something to keep in mind. So um, hopefully our friends, which are now out of the shelter over in Mount Joy, uh, they may be, hopefully they're keeping an eye on that, but that's something to kind of keep an eye on there as it makes its way uh, off to the northeast. Look like from that, shat, from what we're seeing from that couplet, there's Preemption and there's Sherrard right there. My goodness. And you know, continues to make his way uh, to the northeast. So, Sherrod, you may be out of the woods on that. But nonetheless, you're talking about a lot of lightning and heavy rain, blinding rain going on. Dark skies going on just outside, just west of Sherrard itself, as that makes his way uh, off to the north and east. You can see the bending right here. But there is a couplet, as we're seeing right here, and uh, possibly some rotation going on. There's nothing breaking that flow. So that's probably what we're dealing with, with a little broad rotation that is taking place just west of 67, Andrew. Our signature right now. It has not prompted the National Weather Service's attention yet, but I think, like you said, it is uh, worth watching, especially because it's wrapping yeah. itself up there. Look at the bend that we see here. That could be an indication of some very strong straight line winds that may be going on there, uh, Andrew. Yeah, and the, definitely the warning that you see there in place for 60 mile an hour winds uh, that are being uh, warned for there right now. So we're going to keep a really close eye on that. Uh, other storms that we're watching throughout the region, you have more storms building to the west of that. Minneapolis again, it seems like you've been through a couple of rounds here this evening. That one's not severe. You're just having some uh, heavier downpours. There you see we're still monitoring that storm that just got out of the immediate Quad Cities uh, that is still kind of drifting its way off to the north and to the east. Now, the National Weather Service saying in regards to this storm, the environment that it's entering right now is not favorable for any additional rotation. What you may see from this storm are what we call scud clouds, and those may appear to be rotating. I know, a good little run of lightning there on the Bridgepoint camera, but uh, most of the time those are just quickly rising and falling clouds with that rush of wind and that rain-cooled air that creates those. But it almost looks like the, the sun is trying, or some sunlight is trying to peek through the clouds there, the back edge of the storm kind of approaching the, uh, the immediate Quad Cities. But, ooh, that was quite a downpour that moved through. And, of course, now that's heading off to the northeast with that severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, that does include western Whiteside County, much of Scott County, into parts of Clinton County until 645. There's Davenport Eagle Eye. Uh, looks like rain getting a little lighter there. Good flash of lightning, too. He's tell you, these storms have been packed with lightning. Uh, good hail production, some nice-sized raindrops in the upper part of these storms. That's what tells us what's going on when you see all the lightning. And then you can see what I mean about some of the scud clouds. If you look at those clouds in the distance, they look like they have little fingers coming down from them. Those are what you would call scud clouds. And I know they look intimidating, but that's just, again, a sign of condensation. <coughs> as that rain cooled air uh, gets on out of here. So there's three severe thunderstorm warnings we're tracking right now. One still includes the immediate Quad Cities. Another one north of the Quad Cities getting into, again, Clinton into Whiteside and also parts of Rock Island County. And then you've got another one here south of the Quad Cities for Alito near preemption and still watching that little interesting spin signature uh, that's sitting down there. Nothing warned right now for a tornado. But we're going to keep a very close eye on that uh, as it continues to wrap itself off up to the north and to the east. There you see the severe thunderstorm warning that continues for the Quad Cities until 645. In fact, that's about five minutes away. They'll be expiring that, uh, it appears, shortly. And then these storms will continue to move off to the northeast. I'm kind of curious to see what we've done with the storm energy. Have we really eaten that away? Uh, it looks like we have for the most part, but there is still some energy left out to the west. And I want to put future track into motion. Uh, it looks like we are going to kind of quiet things down here once we move that round of storms out of here. Yeah, there's some more showers in central Iowa that may move through here a little bit later uh, this evening and overnight. But it looks like the storm threat, this is going to be it. Once this line moves through, you don't see future track or any of our other models producing any more thunderstorm activity that's going to be coming through and that makes sense. Sun is getting ready to set and uh, we're going to be losing that storm energy. But yeah, a few more warnings to track here for a little while longer. Yeah, no question about that. Thank you, Andrew. On that and of course, yeah, we're going to kind of continue this uh, coverage for I say about 20 more minutes and 20 more minutes <clears throat> and then we'll go back to uh, regular programming. 
but we're going to continue to monitor these, these storms, especially what we're noticing outside of preemption with that kind of couplet that is taking place uh, just outside of Sherrard itself. There's a couplet that we're noticing. In fact, maybe even another little one right here as well, just between preemption and Sherrard making his way off to the uh, north and east uh, with that very heavy rain, lightning taking place, but maybe some funnels that are possibly popping up as well as that makes its way off to the north and east. So very still a very dangerous situation going on. Uh, but you can see this is the strongest part of the storm that is taking place within this warned area. So if you're watching us around Biola, Alito, looks like things are calming down, getting some nice rain. Matherville looks pretty good. But once again, the, the couplet that we just showed you also is containing a little bit of some hail as well. Uh, kind of getting a little large. We may be talking outside of Sherrard, maybe some uh, close to quarter size hail, maybe nickel size hail that could be falling just north of the Sherrard area. Uh, our hail size is probably a little delayed on this, I would say, but where we're seeing that yellow, because you got the hail taking place here, yet it's probably indicating what the size uh, has been uh, in the past. So quarter size of hail with the yellow that we're seeing there, that kind of makes a little sense uh, from this storm. So once again, quarter size, just enough to cause some of that damage uh, if you have your car parked outside. So that's going to be the big concern that we see here. Um, you know, Andrew, let's go ahead and kind of do this um, with those warnings that we'll continue to, mod uh, to monitor here is the actual wider picture of this storm itself and kind of uh, remind, uh, kind of give everyone a little bit of a history now with this storm that we've been watching ever since, I would say, about 4.15 um, this afternoon when we saw the first of two waves move on through, the first one actually producing uh, more non-severe non -severe, uh, activity in the form of some showers, some thunderstorms, a little bit of some wind, kind of made its way well ahead of the instability that was still off to the west of us. So once that moved on through, the big question was that second wave. We knew that second wave was one to be concerned about. The question was the intensity that was gonna be taking place. You combine that with the warm front that has now made its way just to the north of the Quad Cities, and you got this twisting going on. Got winds coming out of the east. You got winds coming out of the south. You got the low level jet. You got the strong winds aloft gusting over 110 miles an hour. So that was a concern with this second line of uh, producing some uh, possible tornadoes and some of the rotation that we were concerned about with that uh, second wave. And you can see that continues to kind of make its way off to the north and east. But once this wave moves on through, then no doubt. Uh, we're going to be in the clear. The core of the system is still located out to the west. We're going to have some wind that's going to start picking up again as we head into tomorrow, likely getting some gusts around maybe close to 40 miles an hour. And this will also usher in some slightly cooler temperatures come tomorrow, more seasonal temperatures. And then after this wave moves on through, then we're talking the coldest of the air, or the coolest of the air, I should say, uh, as we make our way into the rest uh, of our work week as we're looking at those daytime highs dropping around 50 overnight lows in the mid 30s and then we'll see that slow recovery in temperatures going into the weekend but we've been kind of spoiled these past few days taking advantage of this nice unseasonably warm air but that has been the fuel for these showers and thunderstorms for this particular day and we saw this ever since last week that this was going to be the prime day of seeing that severe weather, especially given the timing that we're looking at for the later day hours. That's the greatest amount of instability that we're expected to see from this line, especially when it came to this second line. And that's why we've been seeing numerous warnings pop up in the form of some tornadoes, even the form of some severe thunderstorms that are going on as well. And once again, keeping an eye on this new, I think, new severe thunderstorm warning that has popped up uh, for parts of uh, Scott, uh, parts of Whiteside, even going to Carroll County. To get the latest on that, let's go back to meteorologist Andrew Stesky. And that one does include the tag tornado possible. That's going to go until 730 this evening. Good chunk of real estate again on this one. And this is the same storm that just moved through the Quad Cities. Had a little bit of report of some rotation near Bettendorf uh, that we were talking about about 20 minutes ago. So here we are again. We're starting to see that storm ramp up a little bit more. So you see it does include, yep, some more big cities there. You've got Savannah, Thompson, Clinton, Cordova, just southeast of DeWitt. 
nice little sliver of some hometowns there up into Whiteside and Carroll County. There we go. There's a cleaner view now that we got rid of that old severe thunderstorm warning. There you see more defined what those cities are that we're concerned with right now. Ooh, quarter size hail, 60 mile per hour wind gusts. And again, you see the tag on your screen here, tornado possible. So we need to treat this uh, with a little bit more care, if you will. This means we need to be ready to have this potentially become a tornado situation with little to no advance notice. Let's put the tracker on this. In fact, you look at the radar signature, you can see a little bit of a loop on this or a little loop de loop just west of Clinton, a little comma head appearance there. That's indicating, yeah, we've seen some probably broad rotation with this. And if we put that back on there, yep, sure enough, you can see the red flowing right into the green, some broad rotation uh, coming into play. So let's take that where that broad rotation is, put the tracker on it, throw it all the way to the northeast. Elvira, six minutes away. Thompson, 20 minutes or so and then about less than a half an hour uh, until we get this into Savannah. Still an area that hasn't been totally worked over yet by thunderstorms. So this is why this thing is still going strong and it just appears to be recycling itself all over again. And there you see the rotation east of DeWitt and north of McCausland getting ready to head right to the northeast to uh, once again cross the Mississippi River. Seems to be the theme here this evening. Yeah, we've, already, we've already seen that in a couple of situations already with some of these storms trying to recycle itself. We saw that in places like around Wapalo earlier on. Uh, this is pretty much, this is a, pretty much the same system that continues to make its way off the northeast. Yeah, nice little inflow that we see here, make it its way, nice little couplet. So this is what we're monitoring again. That's why we're seeing that radar indicated possible tornado. And not only do we have that, we have to deal with the hail that's going to be possible with this as well. Right now we're kind of in that blue, kind of a marginal, probably getting some maybe nickel size or even uh, dime size, probably dime size, possibly with that storm. Right now, from our algorithms around McCausland, just east of uh, DeWitt, right there on Highway 30, a little orange. So maybe we're talking about possibly dime size that could be falling from that part of the storm itself. But there's a storm that we have here uh, that is worn going from McCausland to Cordova, low more, and then points north and east. Clinton right now, all quiet, but if you're looking out to the west, you notice that those skies are awfully dark. You're probably noticing some lightning too. Uh, maybe getting a little rush of air coming ahead of the storm itself. That continues to make its way off to the northeast. So kind of watching that little couplet that we see just off to the south and west of you, um, that could be something we definitely have to keep uh, a really good eye on as well. So that is the warm storm that goes on until around 7.30 for parts of Comanche, Clinton, uh, even going in across the river into Fulton, as well as over in Savannah until about 7.30. And once again, we got this warm system here, north of the Quad Cities. We have a new warning that's out for Henry County. Oh, Geneseo. There we go, Andrew. <laughs> Geneseo's hometown right there, right there, home, uh, home of the Maple Leafs. And you can see that is until 730. Uh, not only parts of Coal Valley, Kelowna, uh, but also uh, around Silvis as well. And that extends even farther eastward right near the Atkinson area. This is a severe thunderstorm warning, likely because we saw that little couplet just around preemption itself getting a nice little, nice little circulation here that we see, very broad in rotation. Nothing confirmed as far as spotters out there um, that we're noticing. Uh, any more details on that? Um, let me see here. Um, Looks like it does have their attention. It's got the National Weather Service's attention from what I last saw. Yeah, noticeable wind signature coming out of the northeast in Mercer County. Um, has been supported with some wind damage too, um, outside of right around Alito itself. So um, they're, they're that's why they've kind of issued this warning out a little farther downstream into Henry County. I think that's a really good move uh, by the uh, National Weather Service as uh, bringing that out. So this is, has been a storm that has been produced, that has produced some damage uh, outside of Alito itself. And there's that little circulation that we see, that rotation, that signature that continues to make its way off to the north and east. So uh, to the timing on this around Geneseo, about 15 minutes Prophetstown around 34, 40 minutes over in Tapico. Uh, Cooper's going to be just fine. He knows where to go, I understand. You know more about Cooper than I do when it comes to severe weather. But he knows exactly where to go. Oh, yeah, I'll that, find him. As soon as I get home, he'll be under the bed. So <laughs> yeah. he, he knows exactly where to go. <laughs> Way <laughs> to go, Cooper. Open. Yep. <laughs> He's watching this coverage, I bet, too. I wouldn't be surprised about that. <laughs> so, uh, so we got two warnings right here. We've got that third one uh, located around Mercer County. Um, this will likely... 
Let's see, this is the one that goes until 715. 7.15. Okay, a little bit of lightning going on here. Um, I think the concern here is gonna be hail. And you can see that outside of uh, Orion, extending westward, heading into about Coin Center. Uh, you can see the potential of maybe seeing some uh, dime-sized hail just now east of Sherrard. So if it holds that course, Orion, you're gonna be seeing uh, some of that hail make its way in your neck of the woods in just a few minutes or so. Uh, we do have some, uh, some it, it, well, let's go to the uh, news desk right now with Shelby and Joe to give us details on that. Go away from us and we'll pull up the video actually if you can pull it up here i do want to give an update we'll wait for that uh, i don't know if james and andrew said it but morgan strackbine is back from being out in the beast so she's back safe and in-house but check out these hail pictures this is from over near andalusia lisa short one of our co-workers here at news 8 sent this in what size would you guys call that? is that mothball I don't know what a mothball size is. <laughs> a little bit bigger than pea size. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I would go, yeah, definitely high, bigger than pea size, maybe about marble size that we're seeing. Yeah, yeah. okay. Oh, I like well, that. We'll go with marble. Okay, and then Deanna, could you pull up, Deanna, back in the booth, could you pull up the next video that we've got here? I think we've got a couple of videos and pictures that have been sent in. I know we've been getting things from all over. Uh, we're going to pull some one thing up from Augusta, Iowa, I believe. Lisa sent us in something... Oh, just kidding. We're going to go over to Salem, Iowa for building, building damage. Salem, of course, is over in Henry County. This video, though, is, or photos, I should say, is from Augusta, Iowa, Des Moines County, just west of Burlington. You don't see anything touching down below, but you can see that rotation starting to form. This was sent in a little over an hour ago. And we have some other photos we want to show as well. A lot of damage is coming in from south. Wow, look at Iowa. that. Yeah. There it is. You can yep. see the cars is, underneath the roof there. Yeah, this is down in Salem, Iowa, Henry County. This was sent in by Micah Stevens. He's a meteorology student down at Mizzou, so getting some work in with us before he maybe comes and has a job someday. <laughs> but no, a lot of the damage that we're seeing online is coming from southeastern Iowa, New London, Iowa, Salem, Iowa. This is rotation that was forming a little bit ago over in Bettendorf, right over Devil's Glen Road and Tanglefoot. And I could see a lot of you on Twitter talking about how fast the clouds were moving over 53rd Street, over in that border between Bettendorf and Davenport. You can see a video here right now. I do also have a power outage update for you. Ameren right now is reporting in all of Illinois, they've got about 1,600 customers without power, and about 1,200 of those 1,600 are coming from directly in the Alito Viola area. So Mercer County right now, power is down widespread across that whole area. Of course, we're not seeing any other power outages in the immediate Quad Cities. Yeah. And we were keeping an eye on that Bandits game as well. It said yeah. they were going to be delayed, but I haven't seen I, any I, updates. I would about... be stunned if the Bandits were playing baseball tonight. But... Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Unless they want to start at like 3 in the morning. So <laughs> let me check their uh, Twitter, see if they have any official update. But... Yeah, I didn't see one earlier, but yeah. um, we do. We are sure. looking at some of those power outages. And again, it is <laughs> Mercer County. That is where a lot of those are at. But here in the Quad Cities, the immediate Quad Cities, we do have a lot of you sending in that you can notice that storm moving out of the way. The wind isn't as bad. I got a text message saying the wind felt physical for about sure. two minutes, Ooh. which is an interesting <laughs> word. Is it? Oh, but that's yeah, a, that's yeah. exactly what it was. Yeah. <laughs> and Andrew, I think you've got Morgan here with you right now. Yeah, she's back. Uh, the, the woman of the day, I guess you could say. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> uh, I do have some, some bad news, though, if you're maybe watching, listening to us from the Bandits game. There is yet another line of thunderstorms, and this is a beefy one that is once again getting ready to move right back into the immediate Quad Cities. Now, it's not severe right now, but once again, the lightning is packing a punch. I mean, check that out on radar. Just west of the Quad Cities, another solid line of thunderstorms getting ready to come right in. New Boston, once again, getting hammered with lightning, some gusty winds, and very heavy rain. By the way, the National Weather Service is keeping a close eye on this portion of the line near Minneapolis and Burlington. May need to go warned with that here for wind shortly. Some of the velocity readings have been getting a little bit more amped up, if you will. In fact, look at some of the stronger readings south of Keysburg. We're keeping a close eye on that. No warning right now, mm -hmm. but the National Weather Service is keeping a very close eye. We may see a warning come out for that shortly. But of immediate concern, 
Uh, other than these two severe thunderstorm warnings, you have one east of the Quad Cities in Henry County. Again, for wind, quarter-sized hail. Another one to the south, Preemption, Orion, uh, just before Cambridge, quarter-sized hail and 60-mile-an-hour wind gusts. It's this one that we've been seeing that little bit of a <coughs> comma head shape with some possible brief spin-ups. That's why it says tornado possible with this severe thunderstorm warning until uh, 730. That's another beefy looking storm just moments away from getting into Clinton, it looks like. Talking about these storms that are producing some hail, but we're concerned that the uh, structure of these storms are showing a bit of a little rotation going on. So that's something we have to keep an eye on. That may have to, unfortunately, have to go. We were talking about maybe going to network around seven. We may have to extend this, guys, just a little bit more. And we apologize for viewers out there uh, on this. But we're dealing with a situation where, you know, we're, we're talking about viewers within these warnings that are extremely concerned. We've seen that from, uh, from responses from viewers uh, about what is coming their way and what has already happened as well. So that is something that we're letting viewers know that, you know, we're not quite out of the woods with all these warnings that are popping up here. This is out of uh, Clinton, Iowa, and this is very likely what, looking off toward the, um, to the west a little bit? I bet it's, it's probably a little bit to the east or to the Trying north. To, I'm not yeah. sure if that is a sunset out there or what. That's why I said look out to the west, but um, it's really hard to, to, to go by that. But uh, nonetheless, those storms are uh, just getting ready to make his way just south and west of the Clinton area where a severe thunderstorm warning uh, is out uh, for parts of Clinton going into parts of Whiteside as well as into around uh, Carroll County. But these storms that we're seeing here really erupting, trying to actually, maybe safe to say, Andrew, catching up to that, um, that second line. Yeah, and I, think, going on. I think it's finally happening. You know, a new line kind of coming in from that original second line that was moving through. And now that one, you Has have another huge warning yeah. uh, for. No tornado possible tag on that one, by the way. But if you went to the velocity mode here, I think we're talking about some maybe some straight light winds. Yeah, from you can see with the green and the red here, um, likely that is what we're probably noticing here. Mm -hmm. And that's probably why they have this warning out just west of Alito, all the way down into Henderson County, just around Aquaca, west of Biggsville as well. And, uh, you know, we can't be ruled out maybe even a little couplet or two that may come uh, out of that as well. So, yeah, severe thunderstorm warning with this uh, for until around 8 o'clock as that continues their race in parts of Mercer, Henderson, and very likely make it its way in parts of um, Warren County going into the next hour or so, Andrew. Yep, and not only the wind threat there, but you have the hail threat as well. Looks like some of that. Uh, just west of Aquaqua there. That's always a name that I have. You know. Aquaqua? I've been here for almost five years now. <laughs> and you still have problems pronouncing that name. It's, I, I owe you guys a visit, I swear. I'll but that's News 8 Country. Days. I want to point that out. Oh. They, they, they're fine with that. You're doing great. Yes. <laughs> it absolutely They understand. Is. There you see some of those, uh, the, the hail potential yep. there. A little yellow, a little orange, so nickel size to quarter size there. You see it on the scale. Mm -hmm. That's moving off to the northeast. And I noticed too, while we were on the hail probability, there's another little core here um, up into Henry County as you get right along Interstate 80. Um, in fact, we're getting a report from Wendy right now. I think that's on our Facebook Live, Morgan, right? Yeah, that there's hail falling in Kelowna. Uh, Wendy, if you can tell us what size hail you're seeing. Yeah, we got a hail core right along the interstate there uh, moving to the uh, northeast. Mm. Let's put the hail size tracker on that. Again, I think this is a little bit delayed, yeah. but it goes to show the potential that's now in that area, uh, which would indeed indicate quarter size hail right along the interstate. That's probably causing quite a little snarl up. Uh, on the interstate itself, especially if that's quarter-size hail hitting the cars. People tend to hit the brakes. Yeah, Justin Cardamon, case. actually, our, our chaser, um, has made his way toward, um, where is he? Where does he say where he was at? My goodness, he was indicating uh, that, no question, um, right around Orion or so, uh, they reported some quarter-size hail that was falling out there in Orion. So uh, nice job, Justin, on that for letting us know that uh, definitely there is some hail, some large hail that is falling outside of Orion as that system continues to make its way off to the north and east. 
Yeah, and the good news is, you know, we, we haven't had to talk about a tornado warning for, for a while now, which is good. We still have, of course, that one severe thunderstorm warning to the north of the Quad Cities. Yeah, it includes Clinton, where we have that tornado possible tag. I kind of want to keep revisiting this, too, because this is, again, something that can develop very, very quickly. We're talking about brief spin-ups on the front edge of this line. Uh, let's put a little bit of a loop on this just so we can kind of get our bearings and see how this storm has kind of evolved. And, yeah, we have a little bit of broad rotation. But again, I don't have anything really kind of jumping out at me right now that's screaming. We've got something on the ground that's to be concerned about. But again, the kind of that comma head shape to the storm, definitely a good rush of wind that's going to be moving through. It looks like, honestly, the worst is going to be just north of town of Clinton there, uh, maybe even kind of skipping out on Comanche and Clinton proper. It's a little bit further north, say near Thompson, uh, that you're going to be dealing with not only a lot of lightning, but some hail potential, some wind potential. There's your hail probability. That's been decreasing a little bit since when we last checked in on uh, that particular storm. But again, severe thunderstorm warning with tornado possible tagged. That will go until 730. We got 30 more minutes left on that. We should put a quick little track on that. That's one that we haven't given too much attention to yet in terms of the track. So let's put that in there. Let's take it to the north because eventually we're talking about that getting into Carroll County. Yeah, Savannah, 12 minutes away. Mount Carroll, uh, about 19, 20 minutes away and then eventually into Lanark. So again, that's north of the Quad Cities, Clinton into parts of western uh, Whiteside County, western Carroll County. That's going to go until 730. And we're hearing the rumbles of thunder just outside our station here. And once again, it's that not only that little wave that we see from preemption near the airport that we're noticing, but that's another strong wave developing just off to the south and west um, and producing that lightning, but stretching its way all the way farther south. Um, and the reason why they extended that severe thunderstorm warning even farther eastward east of 67 is because that we're probably getting some, uh, some very strong straight line winds that if we open this up a little bit, let's zoom this out a little bit more and show you that warning that we have here. I mean, look how far they extended the warning uh, for this. So this is moving at a really good clip. And uh, because of that, they want to get everyone who's in the warning far east of it, like Alexis, uh, even around Monmouth, New Windsor, going up to about pre right around here. It may be quiet right now. <clears throat> but that line is moving very quickly from west to east, likely having some pretty strong winds over 60 miles an hour, and that can certainly cause some damage. So uh, once again, maybe some more straight line winds at any type of spin that's going on, and it doesn't take much. It doesn't have to be just spinning to cause damage. It can be a nice straight line wind, and you can see from our uh, velocity mode here, here's the red. You almost start seeing some of that yellow. That's some pretty intense wind that could very likely be coming down from the storm itself, uh, probably be accompanied by some of the very heavy rain uh, that is going on. So around Seton, it's a Hicko Seton, once again, uh, under the gun, just off of 20th Avenue, 150th, 150th Street, <clears throat> making his way eastward. So watch out. We may be talking about uh, potential brief power outages for you guys. It almost seems like it's trying to dig its way a bit more north and east. So Alito right now, um, those strong winds are just on top of you. Viola, Matherville around preemption with that line and makes his way off to the north and east. And my goodness, a new warning just popped up for the immediate Quad Cities. Again. My goodness. <laughs> Is this never going to end, Mike? <laughs> it will. It will, folks. Um, but we're, once again, we're dealing with a situation where um, we're noticing some little couplets that may be popping up uh, within the line that may have some brief spin-ups with it. And uh, it may be brief, but it may be enough to even cause uh, some damage. And once again, we've had reports of some uh, weather damage uh, from activity that took place in parts of southeastern Iowa and even making his way just across the river itself. Even around Alito had reports of some uh, damage that was reported out there as well. So people's lives are being changed because of this severe weather event that is going on this evening. Okay, that makes a big difference. They didn't wake up this morning and expect this to be happening to them, but sure enough, that has been the case. And of course, we'll give some more information on that on our newscast at 10 o'clock tonight and uh, even probably get some more uh, pictures from even videos and even some of the damage that has been going on. Here's some of that, once again, that hail core just east of Kelowna right now. Uh, likely we're getting some quarter size uh, hail out of that. Uh, once again, that's probably more of a delay that we're getting here, but uh, very likely just off of uh, Interstate 80, right around Osco Road and Green River Road, making its way off to the northeast, just south of Wolf Road right there, 
um, just north of Geneseo itself. We'll have to keep an eye on that little couplet that we see here. It's kind of making its way off to the uh, north and east. So once again, we'll continue to watch that. Maybe a good rush of wind. But once again, we could be talking about some hail that may be falling from that storm as it makes its way off to the north and west. We even there's a barn. We even have a we have a horse out there just uh, outside, just north and west of Geneseo. So they may be seeing some um, some hail out there. Hopefully, a horse will get underneath the shack and. We're going to be all good. He's a very smart horse. Let's, let's put it that way. Uh, they're out in the open field there. So I think he's going to be just fine. Uh, new warning that's just popped up, right, Andrew? Yep, they've shortened up that uh, existing severe thunderstorm warning, kind okay. of chewing off the western part of it. But uh, that still goes till 730. But that couplet really caught my attention in it. And it shows up really pronounced on my other radar screen that I've got on my laptop here. But I just wanted to point that out that I think that's going to be another area worth watching. Because again, these are all storms that could have those quick little spin ups on the leading edge. And that storm certainly has that potential. I also want to point out too the new severe thunderstorm warning that came back out for the Quad Cities. And in fact, it covers really the entire Quad Cities. Um, it does have that tag tornado possible as this new line of storms is coming through with again torrential downpours and the like. I'm trying to see if I can get this thing to highlight it. There it is, tornado possible. So that new warning goes until 745. And if I peel off the radar here, because I know there's so much going on, we got stuff all over the place. There you see that new warning in that canary yellow. That's the tornado possible. It is the entire Quad Cities all the way up to DeWitt, all the way down to preemption and then a good radius around us until 745. Again, tornado possible with that. So we're getting the wind. We're going to get some hail likely with that too. Looking at some of the hail probability, it's increasing again uh, as you go southwest of the Quad City. So yet another round is trying to move through here. Just doesn't want to stop. And we're still also watching some sizable returns here as you get near uh, Aquaca again. There it is. You're seeing some of that. And you pronounce it correctly to too. There. <laughs> We got it. We got it. But yeah, that's that's again starting to kind of ramp itself up just west of town. So the line yep. is not done yet. Yeah, uh, we still got a little ways to go here. I, I'm I'm going to use that term canary yellow. Canary, canary yellow. Canary yellow. Yes. That makes so you got your your yellow, uh, but you got your yellow here. Canary yellow canary right yellow. here. Canary yellow is bad. Okay, let's just put it that way, <laughs> because it's just not only talking about. Uh, you know, severe weather elements are in there, but also the possible rotation that could be taking place within that broad line that we see off to the uh, north and east. So still, the reason why these, once again, these, these warnings look so big is because these storms are moving so quickly, you really only have minutes until you get to your shelter. That's what we're concerned about. And more importantly, um, what's so hard to detect on radar are these little brief spin-ups, these couplets that, you know, develop like within a minute or so, and then they fall apart. That's how brief they are. So that's why it's so challenging on the radar to catch these on when we do. But when we do see them, that's a sign that we could be seeing more pop up along the line itself. So here is the line now crossing the river, everything pretty quiet out there at the west. That's what we're anticipating uh, later on tonight before things really begin to calm down uh, for the rest of the night. So once again, this is the, the second line that is making its way off to the uh, east very quickly, getting ready to make its way along the river itself. And uh, once again, very potent storm moving very quickly, has some good wind coming down from it. Sometimes the winds are a little bit stronger in other parts of the line itself. So you create these little couplets that pop up like we're seeing here. Good bend. Let's go back to that reflectivity again, if we can. There, look at the bend there that we, we see right there. That's wind. This is the strongest part of the storm. The wind's coming right here, just west of Little York around Illinois 135. That's the strongest part of the storm that we see here. But more importantly, look at that couplet right here. Look at that flow of air, that little notch, okay? This is what we're concerned about just north and west of Seton around Alito itself. If you're watching us from Alito, I would say, you know, get to your safe place, really, okay? Because what we're seeing here on this couplet uh, from this radar, that couplet is maybe a sign of an embedded uh, twist going on. And we're kind of noticing a little bit of that even on the reflectivity mode here, Andrew, just around Illinois 94. 
Yeah, it certainly looks that way. You're seeing that. And, yeah. and those, they develop so quickly. I yeah. mean, you take your eye off of it for a second and boom, uh, there it is popping up. So that's why, again, you got to use a lot of caution as these storms come through. You get these little spin ups that happen just like that. There's a lot of twisting motion that is still ongoing in the atmosphere, even at this hour as the sun um, continues to set or will be setting here shortly. So that huge severe thunderstorm warning that extends south of the Quad Cities, that's going to go until 8 o'clock. That one does not have the tornado possible tag on it, however. However, I want you to still, like James said, treat that with extreme caution, especially near Alito, where we see these little notches develop in the radar display. That tells us that there's definitely some kind of spin trying to take place as we go into that storm. You're seeing the notch right there on radar. Also a good reminder, look at how far ahead of the storm that lightning can strike. That's why you also don't want to be caught outside. That lightning bolt is well ahead of the actual storm itself. So get away from windows as that thing moves through. Still have that huge tornado possible severe thunderstorm warning. That includes all of the Quad Cities and kind of a good mile radius around us too. Uh, we're continuing to monitor that. Also still some hail potential that is near um, the uh, Interstate 88 corridor, actually just south of that, southeast of you. And you're seeing that potential right here, getting to an extreme northwestern Henry County, almost getting ready to jump right over into Whiteside County. Uh, there's some hail potential with that. You see it's just south of Hillsdale, east of Clinton. That's also moving to the northeast. We might be talking about a hail threat getting into Prophetstown and eventually Sterling Rock Falls if the uh, storm can hold itself together. We got some more updates uh, from the guys at the desk. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, Andrew, yeah. this is um, photos from Kelsey in Orion. You can see that quarter size hail. And thank you, Kelsey, for that reference there, showing us uh, with the quarter right next to the hail. Um, again, that is out in Orion. We also have, uh, a, which is Henry Con. I think we also have some video from Kelsey, I believe, if we can play that. There we go. Kelsey also sending us this video out in Orion of that hail coming down. On her back porch there, you can see those quarter-sized balls of hail just shooting onto her back porch there. Kelsey, thank you for sending us those photos and videos. Some more pictures out here. Uh, this is in Sherrard. You can see a little bit smaller of hail out there. I think we were calling this marble-sized hail earlier. So different sizes of hail uh, depending on what parts of the area you are in. But nonetheless, it's coming down pretty frequent out there. Uh, no matter what area you're in, Shelby. I also want to point out that in Mercer County, please be careful when you're driving, especially going along Illinois 17, just east of Alito. We do have a photo. We're going to try to pull it up here in just a little bit, but we do have photo confirmation of a bunch of power lines down on Illinois 17. Uh, Mercer County towing, thank you so much for taking that and sending that in to us as well. Um, but that would explain why Ameren has, you know, over 1,100 customers without power right now in the Mercer County area is clustered around Viola and around the Alito area. So we're going to try to get you that picture here in just a little bit. But for right now, guys, I'll send it back over to you. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate it. And once again, we want to appreciate all the viewers out there that have been sending in those pictures and some of the videos as well. Uh, wonderful to see that. Kind of gives us an idea about the history of these storms that have been going on, and unfortunately, you know, the damage that has been taking place as, as well. We've already seen plenty of that. Even that truck that spun out um, on Interstate 80, I believe it was westbound, so we really got that. I, I have to got the update. Maybe you guys in the desk can find this out just real quick, but uh, has I-80 opened up? They, last it, I checked, yeah. They have opened up yep. now? But okay. last I checked, they weren't showing any outages or blockages. Okay, where was that actually located within Interstate 80? Just east of Iowa City. Just east of Iowa City. Okay, thank you guys, really appreciate it. That's some good news too. Uh, taking a look at our um, live shot out of Prophetstown. This is live, and my goodness, see, help me out here, Andrew. You're in control of the camera here. What are we looking at? Is that more toward the west? Yeah, this is looking at the storm that's uh, currently coming into the Quad Cities right now, kind of looking west-southwest. You can see those heavier rain bands, how the yeah. horizon just really disappears right. uh, to give you an indication of just how heavy that rain is. That'll be moving in that direction. So if we still have some daylight, we might be actually get a good vantage point of that uh, come a little bit later when it gets closer. We'll see what the, what the timing holds for that view. But yeah, a good shot of the heavier rain as it obscures the horizon there. Uh, continuing, though, to uh, track what's happening, as course, is this new line of storms racing 
passes through the region, we continue to see intensifying uh, amounts of rain and some lightning here in the immediate Quad Cities. Right now, it looks like the most intense part of uh, any storm that we're tracking, of course, is still down here near Alito. You're getting these little bumps, these protrusions, if you will, in the line where it's kind of sticking out ahead of the main feature there. That's where you could see that brief kind of spin up, if you will. I still want to pull the velocity data back on here, uh, see if you got anything crazy to look at. Not a little broad rotation there south of Alito. Doesn't look too alarming right now, but there's some strong wind gusts in there. And that's another reason you're under that warning 60 mile an hour wind gust. Let's keep the rotation on go a little bit further to the north. Just indicating again some strong winds rushing through the region. A quick little spin up tornado is still possible on the leading edge of this line as it moves through the Quad Cities. Otherwise, still some strong winds also being uh, seen in the velocity data as we go to the north. Back to that Geneseo storm where we had a little bit of a little spin couplet on the uh, rotation earlier. Not seeing anything nearly as exciting right now. Looks like that's kind of shoveled itself off a little further to the north, south of Hillsdale. Uh, but right now, even that signature is not looking too great uh, at the present moment. Good rush of wind coming with that, yeah. though. A little, maybe a little bit of hail going on. You can see how it's kind of clustered uh, just north and west of Geneseo. So maybe a little hail going on with that as we're noticing indicated by the hail potential map there uh, just south of Hisdale as it makes its way off to the uh, north and east. You can see a little purple indicating uh, maybe some brief quarter size hail or maybe even some uh, nickel size hail that may be going on with that wave as it makes its way off to the north and east. So we're dealing with the hail. We're dealing with a good rush of wind that's coming down from these storms across the area. And with some of that blinding rain and some of that lightning, uh, we could get a little brief power outage here and there as these storms continue to make their way off to the north and east. Uh, but uh, once again, uh, you know, we, we've been getting a lot of reports of uh, power lines that have been down, a little damage here and there as well. Uh, this picture is... Um, where is this picture at? So these power lines that are down. This outside of Alito? Yep, this is outside of Alito. This is down along Illinois 17, just east of Alito. Um, big thanks, Mercer County Towing and Recovery for sending this in, but for sure, stay safe out there. You can see the water that's on that road there as well. We're also going to pull up a look at the power outages, especially around the Mercer County area, Ameren. Okay, if you want to look at those dots there, those are all indications of power outages. That orange one hovering right over Viola, that's what you can see on the right side of your screen where it says almost 900 customers have been impacted. Of course, if we go over to the other dots, that blue dot, that's another 248 customers. And then the white dot, that's another 127 customers. So it's no surprise though, when you see videos like those power lines that are down. So if you're in and around the Mercer County area, please be careful when driving on the roads. Yeah, we pretty much have another half an hour or, or half an hour or so to go before some of these uh, warnings that we see uh, come to an end. But nonetheless, we'll kind of keep an eye on that as we make our way into uh, these next, uh, say, half an hour or so. We'll see how it all goes on. But uh, once again, a lot of concern going on with the lightning that's taking place and some of the video that we or pictures that we just showed you outside of Alito. Uh, some pretty good hail going on here. Probably more of a nickel size hail that's taking place uh, just north, south and west of Mount Carroll. Once again, this is probably a little bit old, um, but uh, we're going with what we're seeing um, from the, um, uh, the hail uh, graphic here, indicating that that storm has already made its way just south and west of Mount Carroll near Savannah. So might be hearing a little few pelps coming up here and there on the rooftops. Uh, very shortly here, but uh, not only do we have the hail, but a good amount of lightning here. We could get some free power outages, a little concentration of that lightning located just uh, uh, along Illinois 84, just north of Thompson. So uh, Mount Carroll, you'll definitely be getting uh, your fair share of some very heavy rain hail and a little bit of that lightning to go with it as well with this severe thunderstorm warning that goes on to about 7.30 or so, and that continues to make its way off to the north and east. Uh, concerned about maybe seeing little couplets of brief spin-ups that may be taking place. That's why we're, what's the color again? We call it again, uh, Andrew? Oh, canary. Canary yellow. <laughs> I got to remember that. I got to write yeah. this down. I got to write canary yellow down because that's a great description of it. Um, anytime we see that canary yellow take place, that's telling us um, that uh, there could be a brief spin up that may be taking place within this severe thunderstorm warning. Okay. Usually we normally see just the yellow is indicating it's just a lot of a wind that may be going on, some hail. Um, maybe a good rush of wind, but when we're talking about those uh, brief little spin-ups, that's a big concern. 
And um, this is kind of no surprise because another new warning has just popped up um, for parts of uh, Carroll County and extending his way in parts of Joe Davies going into about Stevenson with this new severe thunderstorm warning that goes on until around uh, 815. So once again, if you're in the path of this particular storm, it's gonna be about the same thing. Some hail can't be ruled out, some blinding rain, a good rush of wind that could exceed maybe 60 miles an hour, enough to cause some minor damage, okay? So that's why we have that new warning that is out, courtesy of our friends over at the National Weather Service, and a possible brief spin-up is once again indicated by the algorithms that uh, some little brief couplets could be popping up within that storm as it quickly advances its way off to the north and east. Several more warnings that continue on in areas around the immediate quad cities until around 7.15 and 7.30. Uh, Canary yellow, I got it right this time. Canary yellow right there, right around the immediate quad cities. We've been hearing reports of some funnel clouds here and there uh, with that particular line as it makes its way off to the north and east. A lot of very heavy rain going on. If we actually put the lightning on here as well, we'll probably notice too a whole lot of lightning taking place. And yeah, we're kind of seeing that, especially with that line that we just showed you in northeastern, uh, well, just northeast of Kelowna itself. Some scattered rain showers going on here, very heavy blinding rain going on, and a good rush of wind. Very similar to what we showed you about maybe 40 minutes ago in downtown Davenport, right there at the ballpark where the rain was just blinding. Uh, in downtown Davenport. You can see that darkness has now made its way off to the northeast. Those are the storms that are northeast of Kelowna, just northwest of Geneseo. That's why you're seeing that darkness in the skies just east of the I-74 bridge on our Bridgepoint camera. Vi visibility actually looking a whole lot better in areas uh, uh, along the bridge, uh, along the I-74 bridge itself. So that's some fairly good news, but you can see the roads, the drivers on there on I-74 uh, taking it nice and slow as some of that rain continues to fall, take it a nice and easy. Uh, can't uh, take any advantage of uh, seeing them, uh, some, um, uh, some sliding with that, water, that wet pavement that is taking place uh, on the bridge itself. So a lot of activity going on with these warnings that we see going on to at least 715, 730. And then farther south of the Quad Cities as you go, I believe we had another wide um, range, a, a much wider uh, warning out here from Alito all the way down to Aquaca and even around Burlington. The big concern here is not just the little couplets that are popping up around, but uh, possibly we are getting some very heavy winds coming out of this, indicated by the arch that we see here uh, just west of Alexis, another one just west of the Monmouth area. You can see where we got the, the, the red and the, even the yellow that's popping up. That's indicating some very strong winds coming down from the storm itself that could very likely be approaching or maybe even over uh, 60 miles an hour. Not so, seeing so much as far as any hail from out of this, but it doesn't take much. Remember, it doesn't have to spin to create damage. A good straight line wind could easily take down some uh, telephone uh, wires, you know, you know pull, uh, power lines down like we saw outside of Alito. So this is something we're worried about. Here's that arch right there, another one right here. There's actually maybe a, a little couplet we'll keep an eye on just west of Alexis there, west of uh, 67. You can see north of 270th Avenue, uh, east of Illinois 135. That could be a little couplet there that is gonna try and make his way off to the east. No break in that flow as we see, as Andrew just put in, making his way from south and then bending his way westward. So we'll have to keep an eye on that, but certainly north of that, that's where we're seeing a nice little arch right here just west of Alexis uh, near um, New Windsor itself. So uh, anyone in that path, uh, be on guard. You may get some uh, brief power outages, uh, maybe some small tree limbs that may knock over some of those power lines. That's always a big concern. And once again, stretching his way southward along Illinois 135, going to 164, just west of Monmouth, and then stretching his way back even farther south and west around the Burlington uh, area. Not much as far as any strong winds coming down from those storms along Highway 34, but moving pretty quickly, and that's why we're making sure that people are well aware of those storms that we see out around Alexis and even around Monmouth. Uh, be aware, things are getting pretty dark where you are just off to our west. Once again, a lot of lightning going on here and the potential we could be seeing some of those storms uh, produce some brief outages as, uh, as well, Andrew. Yeah, and the one thing, and I'm, I'm noticing this too, as you were pointing that out earlier, you know, mm -hmm. you have this Boeing here. Yeah. That's kind of concerning. I mean, you notice the thing really picking up speed here as it heads to the northeast. So I have a feeling 
that may become an issue here a little bit later on, maybe in the next 30, 45 minutes, we may have to have a new warning extending back yet into Henry County again for that same feature. Again, it's going to depend on what the storms do, but it certainly looks like that thing is still healthy and it is still uh, very much maintaining itself. So I don't think the threat is over yet. Uh, and this is an advanced heads up for those of you in western Henry County on the uh, Illinois side of the river. Uh, I think the wind threat will be increasing here along with the threat for heavy rain. Zooming this back out again to just kind of go over some of the warnings that are still in place. I know there's been a lot to keep track of, just trying to keep this as clean as possible as we go through the warnings really quickly here. Again, a severe thunderstorm warning that continues for southeastern Joe Davis County and Metro Carroll County. That's until 815. That is for Doppler radar indicated rotation possible there uh, at any given moment. Still hanging on to this little sliver of a warning that's going to go away. Uh, thank you, Shelby, in just about uh, six minutes or so and then we'll be giving the all clear for Thompson and Savannah. However, notice you could see more activity, still severe thunderstorm warning here for the immediate Quad Cities. That goes until 745. I hear we have a view on our Moline Eagle Eye, and there you see it, yeah, the heavy rain uh, continuing to move right into the downtown here. We're losing visibility. You can still make out the uh, Centennial Bridge there, though. Yeah. Uh, as, you, as you look to the, uh, so that's our Davenport Eli, excuse me, looking toward Moline or uh, Rock Island, and you can actually see uh, that, yeah, coming down in sheets there. That is definitely no some doubt. blinding rain that's off in the distance there that is making its way in. Of course, we saw that very heavy rain that took place uh, in downtown uh, Davenport there where the uh, baseball park is, where a modern woodman, you can just barely see Centennial Bridge. Uh, bridge point camera that we see right here, the darkness of the clouds that we see just to your right, that's part of the cluster of storms that it's making its way just north of Geneseo. Well, we had reports of some uh, hail, or that, yeah, some hail that was reported out there, pushing its way off to the northeast. That's why we're seeing some pretty decent visibility right now, but already some darkening skies and some blinding rains uh, just off to the uh, southwest of us as well. And a little lightning, oh, yeah, of course, to go with it um, as well with that system pushing its way off to the north and east. Well, I've got some clouds that I could show you right here. Look at these. Oh. Yeah, these were sent in from Jimmy and Moline. You can see the down, the, the lower version of our eagle eye camera right there. Also, I know we've all been waiting on the edge of our seats for this, but the Bandits game did get delayed, or postponed, I should say, until tomorrow. Um, they're yeah. going to have a doubleheader tomorrow, seven innings starting at 5 o'clock. Tickets for today and tomorrow are good for that game. But yeah, thank you to Jimmy for sending in these photos from Moline. All right, thank you very much. And take a look at our uh, camera out of Propistown, Illinois. Of course, that is in Whiteside County. Uh, once again, showing this may be actually a little shelf cloud that we see right here. Um, possibly just, is this just west of town there, uh, Andrew? Yep, this is pointed to the uh, west-southwest. Okay, and you can see out in the distance, there's a whole lot of lightning going on here, a lot of cloud of ground lightning that we've been witnessing uh, from, uh, from there. So, yeah, not quite out of the woods yet uh, with this storm. This is a severe thunderstorm warned storm uh, that we're dealing with here as it makes its way off to the north and east. And, of course, we're keeping an eye on these little couplets that have been coming in and coming out always a signature, a sign of maybe some brief spin-ups that may be popping up. So that's our big concern. That's what we're kind of seeing here. Uh, if we actually moved in, here's Erie and Propistown is right next door. And you can see that storm just out in the west. Of course, we saw some of the lightning out there. And you can see even like a little couplet right here just outside of Erie, just outside the town of Erie, um, making its way off to the northeast, northeast, kind of hugging right there along the Interstate 88 corridor. And so there's Erie, there's uh, Wilmot Road, just east of Erie. So right around here, we probably are getting some uh, pretty good wind that's coming down from these storms, hopefully not turning, but just from radar alone, that's something we have to kind of keep an eye on, even though that part of the storm is not under a warned area, that could change pretty quickly. So if you're watching us in Fenton and in Linden, uh, of course, just outside around Prophet Sound itself, maybe even around Morrison, might be missing you. You might be staying to our south, We're kind of hugging along Interstate 88, Illinois 2. That's a concern. This is on velocity mode, and that yellow, that's indicating all that wind coming right down and then just spreading after that. So when you get that type of code or that color down here, 
that's some pretty intense wind that is coming down, and that's why we're concerned with those winds maybe topping over 60 miles an hour. These are the same kind of winds that have been producing um, some brief power outages. Uh, this is one of several storms that have been producing uh, some power lines that have come down here and there from this particular line as it makes its way off to the north and east. I guess you were looking at, Andrew, some the, the, the winds going in and out around this storm. Yeah, it looks like we've got at least about 54, 55 mile per hour readings being with that storm that's just west of Prophetstown. And that thing still means business. I mean, the lightning activity uh, is still continuing to be really impressive. I mean, we just showed you the camera moments ago. It's just about nonstop lightning sitting to the west of town. And again, lightning is always a good indicator as to how strong the storm is. So we're still seeing this thing maintain itself and we're still uh, keeping a very close eye on that. Now that particular storm, not under severe thunderstorm warning right now, but that could change here momentarily, especially if the winds continue to pick up. Still a lot of warnings though on going across uh, parts of the region. You've got this uh, piece of warning still hanging on from the immediate Quad Cities that includes McCausland down through to Cordova, Port Byron, Pleasant Valley, East Moline. Again, that's a wind and a brief spin-up threat, but I've just kind of been watching the velocity scans and I haven't been really impressed with that. There's one warning that's gone away, and I believe that was the one that was in place for Geneseo mm -hmm. in parts of uh, Northwest Henry County. Kind of peel this away and see where we're at here. And yeah, it looks like that warning has gone away. However, as I said earlier, we've got that new activity down here to the south that's had these little Boeing segments in it. And I wouldn't be surprised if they lifted another warning back up into your region, maybe uh, as this next round comes in. That's what we've kind of been watching. In fact, it's really Boeing now. It looks like uh, just uh, east of a wood, or excuse me, west of Woodhall yeah, near Viola. Yeah, just, uh, my goodness, just uh, west of 150 there you see right there. That's the arch that he's talking about right there, just north of Alexis. So, yeah, we could get an extension on that warning going into parts of Henry County and maybe going to Rova Country there in northern Knox County. Uh, but I think this is really have eyes for southern uh, Henry County from Cambridge to especially around Woodhall. So what's interesting here is, you know, we're not going to get that canary yellow. I got this down in my head so much now. Canary <laughs> yellow, canary there yellow. You go. We don't really see that, you know, with this warning that we see here is just regular yellow, but that is indicating to us that, yeah, it's not spinning so much. It just has a good, strong straight line wind that is taking place. And that can just do just as much damage, if not more, when compared to a tornado. Okay, and you can see Andrew went ahead and put the storm tracker on this. So uh, if you're watching us in, in Cambridge, just about 20 minutes from now, a little surprised why I didn't get Woodhall here, but you know, Cambridge is located right here, so you're probably talking about 10 minutes before it hits the Woodhall area. There we I, go. I came, I missed it by two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. Good 12 job. minutes over in Woodhall, Cambridge just over 20 minutes, and we're talking around Galva, uh, even around Kiwani, and just about half an hour or so. And if it holds together, Anawan, uh, in about less than 40 minutes for you, uh, you may be seeing that uh, rush of wind if it does hold together. Once again, it's just not this wave that we're seeing here. There's that little couplet that we're noticing, maybe extending even farther southward, just north of Mammoth itself, uh, probably going to be trying to, maybe even trying to catch up to um, that part of the storm, but that too is moving pretty quickly. Strongest of the storm right now, just north of Alexis, pushing his way eastward. So once again, uh, watching us in, uh, in Rio going into Woodhall, that's going to be the big concern. And then stretching his way farther southward, you might be getting a good rush of wind, but nothing too severe, I see, uh, at least given what we're noticing on the radar, just west of Monmouth, and then kind of dangling his way back around Stronghers. You might be getting a little pea-sized hail, as indicated from our uh, hail tracker here, the dark blue, kind of on the marginal to almost low side. The only really big concern that we see is just between Seton and Alexis, just north of Little Rock right there might be getting a, maybe some uh, maybe some nickel size hail uh, out of that as that continues to make its way eastward so yes some hail with that but we're really concerned about the wind that is being associated with that particular line as that makes its way off to the east the good news is um, that canary yellow uh, box that we see right here just now around the immediate quad cities that's been getting the shortened down, so that's a good sign right there. Maybe an indication that this warning, which goes on for another 12 more minutes or so, will eventually be uh, quickly coming to an end here in just a little bit. And what we're going to probably do here is 
um, you know, given the, uh, what we're noticing right here with these two um, warnings, is probably we're gonna go eventually to network, go back to network here, um, either around 745, or more importantly with that warning that we have here, that goes until eight. We're likely gonna go back to network um, probably even maybe around eight o'clock or so at the latest that we see, given what we're noticing uh, with the motion of these storms as they uh, make their way off to the east. We can't thank enough for all the viewers out there who have been very patient with us. There are a lot of people out there who are very concerned about uh, some of the, this line of storm activity that is going through, very concerned about their property, and that's why we remain on the air the way we are, uh, given the information that has been going on, given the activity that we've been noticing, uh, not just on the radar, but all the indications that we see from our eagle eyes that we have all across uh, the Quad Cities as well as outside of it going on the Illinois side. A great indication here is uh, just around Prophetstown. This is just west of Prophetstown. And uh, Andrew is able to kind of maneuver the camera, even from all the way out here, to kind of give us a good view of what is taking place. So definitely a lot of lightning going on here. And what we're noticing, what we're not noticing here, and what we notice on the radar is there's a whole lot of wind that's coming down from these storms. And that's a big concern as far as producing some of the brief power outages that have been going on uh, with that particular storm as it makes its way off to the north and east. Yeah, I'll say that's an impressive amount of lightning. That uh, is a lot of lightning going out, yep. <laughs> that I have seen with that storm so far. So we'll keep an eye on that. Again, this is the leading edge of that shelf cloud. You get those little finger clouds that kind of come out in front of the storm. We'll do a quick little scan here, and then I'll send you back to radar because this is one of the cameras that we have that's got a really nice view. You're sitting high atop a grain elevator here, folks. I mean, I don't know if you get any higher than that in a vantage point in the country, but definitely some nice kind of very turbulent looking skies here uh, with this line of storms and of course a lot of lightning as it's coming through too. So get ready, it's just moments away from getting into Prophetstown proper there too. We've also kind of been watching the Clinton camera. It's a little bit of a different vantage point. Uh, so far the worst of the, of the weather has kind of surpassed you a little bit further to the south. Definitely some rain coming down there though, uh, from what we can tell, very impressive there. We'll take you back to radar and see what else is happening. Um, there's another view of Prophetstown, too. That's at the high school looking at the football and the baseball field. You can see those ominously dark skies uh, looking right off to the, looks like, northwest in this case uh, for this particular view. We'll check in with the Whiteside County Airport, too, before we send you back to programming because we should have a vantage point of some of the storms from that view um, as well shortly. But uh, radar-wise, I need to resave my position because we keep going back to a blank space, <laughs> but uh, everything's moved off to the east. It wasn't there earlier. I would have been lost, Andrew, if I was in your situation, <laughs> so thank you very much. Oh, yeah, the, the map is, <laughs> is all over the place. But, yeah, still that really long line. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I, I agree with James, I think this is more of a wind threat. I think the, the tornadic threat is quickly decreasing. In fact, latest update from the National Weather Service with this line is that, yeah, they're seeing some, you know, rotating features, but we don't have really anything that's really screaming danger at the moment. Let's go and take it to uh, Shelby, because I understand you got some more uh, pictures from our viewers. Yes, but yeah, we'll get to that or, in a second here. We're, okay. First, we're going to look at the Alliant Energy right now. There are about 2,500 people in southeastern Iowa. We're looking at Henry, Lee, and Van Buren counties that don't have power right now. Really focused around the Mount Pleasant and the Fort Madison area. Also a few over in Burlington as well. Over on the other side of the river, we're still seeing about 1,000 people in Mercer County that are without power right now. And... They finally got you up near Galena. I do see Joe Carroll Energy posting about a dozen people that are out of power. But we're going to take a look at some rainbow videos because after every storm, this comes from Brett over in Makokita again. He sent us a big storm photo earlier as it was rolling in. And now this is the back half of it about an hour and a half later. We've also got one coming out of Davenport. Joe sent this one in. We got rainbows coming from all over the place. I saw one <laughs> earlier that was in Keithsburg that was really beautiful. But thank you guys for sending this in. This is just stunning. I don't know, Zlatko in the booth, if we can take the Bridgepoint camera. I know that, I wonder if it'll pop back up, but I know a few seconds ago there was like really intense lightning happening on the Bridgepoint camera. So. We'll see if we can spot that here again in a little bit. But I know a lot of you are also... Oh, oh there we go. There oh. it goes. But, of course, after this blows through, a lot of you seeing those rainbows. And we love to see those pictures. Yeah, there's that lightning right there. 
more than we like to see storm damage pictures, of course. That is, that is pretty impressive. Thank you, all the viewers out there. Once again, we can't thank you enough. And of course, we are putting this in our uh, gallery and our webpage as well. I believe so, Shelby. Are we doing that? Yeah, on our webpage. So uh, do check it out. We can't thank all the viewers out there. Once again, being so patient with us when it comes to all this uh, severe weather coverage that has been going on. It's been uh, pretty long, uh, pr over three hours for us, three and a half hours, let's put it that way. Um, but uh, we're going to be going to, and I'll let the booth know here, about 7.45. 7.45, we're going to go back to uh, uh, regular programming here. And if anything does seem to pop up, uh, we will let you know. But right now, we're kind of dealing with some uh, pretty, um, uh, you know, very strong thunderstorms that have some pretty good wind with it. Um, but nothing we've had any reports as far as any uh, power lines down or even brief outages, especially for the warning storms, uh, warning storm that is uh, well south of the Quad Cities heading toward Highway 34. So uh, that is some good news. I mean, we can deal with a good old fashioned thunderstorm as long as they're not out there en enjoying it. Let's put it that way. We can enjoy it certainly uh, inside. Once again, out of Prophetstown, a lot of light, kind of like we're seeing in the media Quad Cities, there's a whole lot of lightning going on uh, with this wave as it makes its way uh, off to the uh, northeast, some pretty good rains that are going to be coming down uh, with this particular storm. But there it is. Once again, we got that one warm storm up around the media quad cities. Uh, I think that is going to be expiring here in uh, just about five minutes or so. So that is some good news. No warning storms up to our south, but the one that we have down uh, up to our north, but no really warm. Oh, we, we have that one. Um, I, t I apologize. This one storm that we see that's getting ready to make its way out of our viewing area right here. It's really this part right here, uh, just west of Illinois 73, that's going to make its way into Stevenson County. So our friends out in Rockford will be kind of tracking this storm, but it has a little hail with it. No real strong winds that we've heard about this from this storm. So really the hail is only the big concern as it makes its way just west of uh, uh, Freeport into uh, uh, Stevenson County. So that's severe thunderstorm warning until around 8.15. Then we can go a little farther southward here. And you can see with that warning going on to about 8.30. Once again, I think we may be talking uh, more of um, um, some good old-fashioned thunderstorm that has a good rush of wind with it. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Any more updates? Ooh, we just got hit by a little lightning on the station here. Good day. Woo! I jumped three feet up in the air. Did you see that? <laughs> it was a millisecond, but it just happened. Oh. Wow, did my hair go up on end on that one? Wow. <laughs> Saw the flash under the door. Yeah, Oof. yeah, my goodness. Holy cow. Um, but yeah, that storm that we just showed you, that it would extend into a warning. Um, that is no surprise. So once again, if you're in that warning, please don't, don't make your way outside. Just stay within the, inside the interior part of your building. A lot of walls between uh, you and the storm. That goes until around uh, 8.30 or so. And then, of course, that last storm that we see, this one last line of storms that we see, is starting to break down a little bit as far as this, war this polygon is concerned. So once again, that uh, rush of wind is really going to be the big concern. Maybe some small pea size or penny size hail that could fall from these storms uh, as they make their way uh, off to the north and east. I even had some chills with that, but keep Ooh. in mind, yeah, I did with that. Wow, that just, <laughs> little hail once again. We gotta keep an eye on that hail outside of Orion. Uh, likely some quarter size hail coming from that. Once again, this is uh, kind of old information that we see here, but that is actually now located over here. So indications are um, that we could be getting more like quarter size hail out of this. Could be a little bit larger, just enough to put that maybe a little dent in the car um, if you have it parked outside uh, right now. So that it will be the big concern. Of course, a lot of lightning going on just off of County Highway 7 there just south of Orion and a whole lot of lightning, as you can see, a lot of rain too. But that arch that we noticed before that had maybe some good wind is kind of slacking off just a little bit. So that is some fairly good news. So be advised, just wait till that storm moves on through, give it another 45 minutes or so, and things will be calming down uh, after that. Uh, once again, we'll get some final thought thoughts here. Uh, Andrew, uh, anything else that we can add to this pot? The good news is everything will be calming down, I would say, after about 9 o'clock or even 9.30, I would say, for a lot of our hometowns. Yeah, we did extend the tornado watch until 9, so it went one more hour, and the National Weather Service say maybe till 10. 
for Bureau County and perhaps, I believe, was it Whiteside County, Morgan? Were those the two? There were two? Yeah. Putnam County, excuse Putnam. me. Yes, those are the ones that uh, could be extended till 10. But again, we really think the risk for tornadoes is decreasing, especially now that we're losing the daytime heating, a lot of these storms sucking up that energy. So right now, the tornado threat would be limited to a quick spin up. And I don't see anything, at least on radar right now, that's really alarming looking at some of the velocity data. Yes, we have some wind signatures, so we are expecting a good rush of wind. As James said earlier, with some of these storms, we're just about out of the woods there in Carroll County. In fact, the hail core is just about ready to move out of Lanark. So not much more concern there. Again, this is a wind threat for Western Whiteside County to much of Henry County. Winds up to 60 miles an hour. Could be some quarter sized hail there. And then also some strong winds as we go south of the Quad Cities. But the good news is no tornado warnings right now in place for the Quad Cities region. We're gonna expire that tornado possible warning here uh, in just a matter of a few seconds. That's right. And once again, folks, you can always uh, keep an advice about uh, the latest weather happenings that are going on around the immediate Quad Cities. If you have your, your Storm Track 8 weather app, once again, you can get the latest information about uh, the current events that are going on with these uh, showers and storms that are taking place around the area. You have the radar there that you can be interactive with as well, zooming in, zooming out, uh, you name it. And of course, if anything was upgraded when it comes to these uh, worn storms to our south, and of course, we will let you know right here on News 8, social media accounts, even when it comes to our web page as well with all the information, all the pictures, videos that have been sent by you, the viewers. So for now, we'll take you back to network here on News 8.